rapid fire. Massive. 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 He knows that was a big one. A massive spring welcome to the Ping Pod in Bristol, Southwest England, which plays host to a humongous battle in the senior British League Premier Division today between TTD and Fusion Table Tennis Club. I'm your host, the voice, Joe Ratajak. I'm going to be joined in the booth shortly by none other than the frog, Tom Maynard. We've got uh, a few technical difficulties that we're just working through right now. We'll get uh, the view onto the screen in a second. Callum, the Welsh Dragon, is warming up. I'm going to show you a few uh, pieces that we've got ready to show. So, league is what I want to show you first up. So, the league, as you know, eight teams, top four, get split into uh, a playoff to play for the league title the bottom four teams of which team ttd and fusion table tennis club are included we are battling it off to secure a place in the premier division for next season so each of these four teams will play each other i'm gonna throw it straight down because the boys are literally about to start let's have a look matched up then the Welsh Dragon Josh Bruce those of you that have seen Josh play before very good shot maker lots of good highlights on YouTube uh, and on Instagram that he's got he's going to be a good one I'm off to a strong start then 4-1 nice short serve there from Callum Josh you can see looking to come in and flick realised that the ball his back's been tried to come in on top have a good control from Callum it's a good start Josh just having a few difficulties then with Callum's serve. Not long, sorry. And on his own. Sometimes can take a little while to get going, especially when you're in a, a different venue, you're away from home. Callum then serving to take this first set. Loaded from Josh. Callum just using that forehand to control takes the first set then 11-2 and joining me in the booth hello, it's the hello. frog hello hello we've had a few technical difficulties but we're online we, we got through it we got through it <laughs> i'll get myself in shot let me try and uh move <laughs> there that go, there fine. you go you're in how are we doing yeah excellent mate yeah so you so, you're actually injured yeah. you're not playing today no bad hip unfortunately mm -hmm. um yeah hopefully make a return soon but yeah Trusting the boys to do the job. So good start there from Callum. Absolutely, yeah, takes it. Here's here's the lineup. So we wanted to show you this before the action got underway. A little bit of a delay whilst we got here, but you can see there Welsh Dragon at one, fan favourite, Pocket Rocket at two. The Frog stepping out uh, for an injury, so the founder comes in at three. 
and then four, Fusion, who have a wealth of talent. They've been plagued by injuries and unavailabilities. They have a number one, though, top England junior, Larry. Josh, who you can see on, on the uh, table at the moment, and Josh Dye coming in at number three as well. Let's go back down there. Just about to start for the second set. So, yeah, first set for Josh was just, it looked a little bit cold, struggled, put a few of his own serves off and put a few of Callum's serves just long and in the net. I think he's likely to get a bit more warmed up now. See a few more rallies. Yeah, and I think Callum's a pretty steady customer. He's usually not really a fast or slow starter. He's just pretty steady right from the beginning. So if you are starting slow, oh, ooh, that's not slow. He's woken up. Super aggressive. Beautiful. Shout out to the Welsh Dragon as well for reclaiming his number one spot in the Welsh men's rankings. Go though, Josh off to a good start. 3 0 up here. The net. I'm back in Callum all the way though here. I think Callum's all-round game will be just very solid and, and Josh will hit some good shots, but I think overall Callum will have enough to, uh, to get through it. The dragon then bringing it back for all. We have got YouTube comments up in front of us. So as always, we want this. <laughs> Tasty. Yeah, as always, we want this to be an interactive show. Any uh, questions you've got, fire them into the chat. Will this match decide if TTD is relegated or not? So, not this match directly. There are four teams. So, yeah, it's, it's basically now the league of eight is split into two mini leagues. So the top four play for winning the league and the bottom four play for obviously relegation. So it's like a mini league now, us against three other teams. So we need to get over those three matches enough points to not be bottom and go down basically. Good spin from the Dragon. Yeah, the other two teams uh, in the bottom four to play off in the relegation battle. North Ayrshire and Drumchapel. So, TTD team have a journey to Scotland, an away trip. Oh, look at this. Ooh, he's got away with that one. You know what, Callum has a very underrated game. At when someone hits a big bomb into his forehand, he's just able to scoop it back in with good quality. He rescues it so well. Yeah. Yeah, we should call him Lassie, the ultimate rescue. Josh is looking good. Bit demoralised here after a good start in this set, and now suddenly they're at five down. That's what Callum can do to you. Can the Dane play in the SBL? Not for this season. Uh, the Dane actually plays uh, in Denmark, and currently the rules in England are if you play for specific European leagues, it's exactly the same for the Beast as well, playing in Germany. You cannot play in the English league, you can't play in both. So for this season, we don't have the Dane and the Beast. Will that change for next season? We're going to have to ask the gaffer. Oh. Well, that's oh, good from Callum. Oh, just apologising there. Clip the net, I think. Great feeling from both, though, wouldn't it? Nine six to the dragon. Good change from pace. Change of pace by Josh there, spinning up that backhand and then just pivoting and accelerating through the forehand. Makes it really difficult as the receiver. I read that though. Aggressive. Oh, nice. That side view is always good to see. Depth of serves and depth of receives. Josh with a beautiful shot.
and eat them. Trust nice. Very good. The dragon then takes the second set as well from being down as well, 0-4. Yeah, it was a good start from Josh that set, but as I said, the backed Callum fairly early in that set. I think his game's very solid, like I said, and uh, wouldn't be surprised if he goes on to win this 3-0 now. <laughs> what do we got going on in the comments? Buggy Beast says, uh, maybe we should go and visit Dusseldorf. Why yeah, not? why not? Yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll probably, I mean, hopefully, be doing some videos there in the future, mm -hmm. so maybe bump into you. And, and Nicholas as well, is this the official English league? It is. And it's the highest league, yeah. So we did have our own league a couple of years ago, TTDSL, but now this is the official British league and the highest division. Yeah. Luca also asks, how's Callum going to feel knowing that he's going to miss the Man United game? You know what? I'm a Man United fan as well. And the way we are playing at the moment... He's probably happy. I'd rather be right here watching <laughs> yeah. table tennis, if I'm being honest, Luca. <laughs> so, yeah. Two nil. Let's have a look then at... We mentioned... The league splitting into four teams. You can see there, North Ayrshire actually finished in fifth place. Fusion then tied with TTD and Drumchapel uh, at the bottom with nine points. So each of these teams will play each other. So because TTD played Fusion away, that's why this return fixture is here at the Ping Pod. And if you remember well, we played the two Scottish teams here at the Ping Pod, which means we have an away trip to go north into snowy Scotland to play those two games. As soon as they get arranged, we'll get that notified onto the channel. Let's head it back down there. The boys are coming out for the third set. Josh still struggling with uh, the dragon serves. That's, that's the open goal shot from the Dragon there. He just, Josh was still getting his fish and chips from around the corner and just couldn't quite find that open, <laughs> open table. You can uh, catch Pocket Rocket in the background there, limbering up, ready. I mentioned it before, Josh has lots of tricks up his sleeve. Forehand chop block there. Callum just went straight through it though. Another really good block from Callum. What I noticed most about when watching the Welsh Dragon play is you look at the height over the net. Generally, all of his shots go there very low. Yeah, he's good. he plays with good quality, everything he mm. does. It's very rare to see him just sort of plonk it on the table. Even if he looks like he's under pressure in that position, he's very good at holding that ball. Yeah. Just keeping it in to not give the opponent an easy shot, whereas a lot of players in that situation will end up playing a weak ball and then they're under real pressure. Yeah, he's got very good hands. We're back in the booth. What's going on? In the chat, who plays after this? I tell you what, you can see it up next. Well, that's a big one. Match two, Pocket Rocket and Larry. That is going to be fireworks. Very, very good game, that one. Larry, very highly ranked in England as a junior. Very good player. So what the Pocket Rocket can do. You can just hear the crowd there getting into it. The TTD home fans getting behind the Dragon. Trying to give him that final push over the line. That was, that was the right ball from Callum, where Josh is looking to pivot there, and he's always got that side open. It's just a couple that he's missed, but again, it's the right, it's the right tactic. Yeah. Good serve from Josh. Always difficult when you see that kicker serve to know how much spin is on it. You know there's going to be an element of side spin. Difficult to know if it's top. Two. Two from the side. Josh there, cutting across the ball with side spin. Who have we got in the chat? The Beast. Come on, boys. Yeah, good from Callum, that. 
Fans enjoying it. Big point this one. It's another good serve, well disguised. Callum just bumping it long. Just feel he's a bit indecisive on that last couple of returns and that's where it's gone off. He's a, he's a little bit passive maybe and what he's trying to do on the return. He's got to really just choose a shot there. Just that. Josh just starting to read. Callum keeping it in the backhand corner a little bit too much. Plays the backhand, plays the forehand off it, Josh. Maybe a bit of an earlier switch from Callum. Again, you can see. You wouldn't be surprised if you see Callum in the first phase of the point, either a receive or a third ball start to go out to wide forehand now. Yeah, straight away. Yeah. Here it is. There Ooh. we go. <laughs> I mean, it would have been spectacular around the back. He's definitely capable of it. Apologies if you caught any uh, bad language there. <laughs> Bit of frustration from the dragon, I think, there, missing that one. Emotions high. It's a big battle, this one. What do we got? Christian saying Josh has no solution to the long half long backhand serves. Dragon's in. Very good server. That was clever. The ball dropped really low there, but Callum put it with, kept it low with a lot of spin and made Josh take on a really tough shot. Oh. Beautiful again. Look at the height this ball goes over the net on the replay. Look at the oh, height. Man, that's so tight, isn't it? Always notice it whenever Callum plays. Stay so low over the net. Oh. Right tactic though, obviously the right tactic. Josh had already started to turn. Just didn't quite land it. Beautiful serve though. I'm keeping it in the backhand corner. Wins that one. Slight change of pace. Spins it up. Leads the dragon then to serve at Juice. Yeah, the drummer likes that point as well. The drum's getting going there. Oh! Look at the kick on this ball. Josh really hooking round it, you'll see. On his counter, the ball hits the table and darts left. Look at this. That was tasty. Beautiful. 11-10 then to Josh. Callum keeping it in the backhand again. No. Josh doing really well though, holding. He's, yeah. Back into the booth. Just, just nicked that set there. But I mean, yeah, to be fair, Josh did well. He started to land more of his shots. He was less hit and miss that set. Mm. Made Callum, you know, he gave him a lot more to think about that set, I think. A lot of serves, so Josh going to short serves to Callum's forehand. Be interesting to see if Callum starts to step across and try and play the backhand to just drill straight through them. Yeah, he might do. I mean, I, even even with returning with his forehand, I think a lot of the shot's been the right shot, but he's, you know, Josh has turned and left a gap, but Callum's just not quite landed that ball. Mm. If he starts to get that on, and then again, the, the game will turn in his favour, I think, still. So, still feeling confident with the dragon. What do we got? Comments. Tom, what rubber do you use on your forehand? Uh, I use Steger DNA Hybrid Hard. On both sides, actually, yeah. Been using that all season. What really is happy it? With it? What is it similar to? Another rubber for another, uh, another brand. Give me an idea, because I've I've only ever used kind of butterfly on there. Is it okay. similar to uh, anything? I'd say if you're going to compare it to something, probably the easiest one's Dignix 09C. It's nice. that style of rubber, a little bit slow, very hard, very grippy. Um, yeah, really good spin. So that's what I'd compare it to from another brand. Yeah. Absolutely. Will there be another junior team as the Beast and the Dane are in the senior team? We actually had a discussion about this the other day. It's something that we really want to kick back on. Get some really good juniors uh, from England, some juniors from across Europe, bring them into a team. Yeah, looking to do that. It's just more about time. Lots of different projects. What can we devote time to? But yeah, for sure, we want to get some juniors in if possible. 
Yeah, the, the beast saying the same as me. Dragon's got to come in with the backhand flick sometimes. Off, serve, receive, instead of playing that. Here we go. Oh, no. He's up out there. Come on, the dragon. Oh, flick off the net. Callum controls it really well, though. Very good hands. Richard, uh, backspin. Nice service combo from uh, from Callum there. So short to the forehand, and then the next one, whip it long into Josh's pivot, into his right elbow. Always nice to combo your serves together. There's the backhand flick. We mentioned. Got the serve receive in. Josh, though, very cleverly targeting wide forehand off it. Mm, bit loose. Bit loose that one from Callum, and Josh does not usually give you a second chance on those with his forehand. Two then. Oh, again. Really started to warm that forehand up now, hasn't he? Yeah. Hits it incredibly hard. You hear it's a beautiful sound when he makes contact with the ball. And serve again. Beautiful. Check it out on the replay. So you go long serve. You force Josh. Watch his feet. He steps back. Creates the angle then. Steps back. Bang. The angle's there. Good from Callum, he's just realised probably the last few points he was a bit passive, right, I need to get on top here, I need to get my own attack in, that's exactly what he did. <laughs> Fans like that one. Welsh Dragon 7-3 up in this fourth set. Timeout already used by Josh and Team Fusion. Forehand safety. Oh! He was like a spider at the back of the court there, the dragon. <laughs> He's clawing everything back. Yeah, he used that forehand safety. Josh started the point off though with a very positive backhand flick up the line into Callum's forehand. this four-point advantage for the Welsh Dragon. Josh here needs two good serves. Callum apologises for the top edge. Takes him into a 9-4 lead. Flick of the net, yeah. Sometimes it just goes that way. The Dragon then, six. Match points, two of which will start on serve. Can he do it in one? Is this the first match? It is, Rob. There it is. Only needs the one. The Dragon then sets Team TTD off to a 1-0 lead. Impressive. So he, he did change up that, that serve-receive. Was yeah. looking to hunt if, if any balls were sniffing long. It was looking to topspin instead of coming in early on it. And yeah, a couple of them took the backhand as well. Really yeah. good. Much better. Again, back to back to his best. That last set there from the Dragon just got on top. Didn't let Josh... He got a couple of good forehands, but he didn't let him really dominate. Then he got control of the game. Got the win that I was fully expecting him to get. So a great start. What's up next then? We mentioned it. Pocket Rocket and Larry. That is going to be an absolute... Bomb fest. Yeah, these guys have played quite a few times and they, they always have a good match. They've both got quite exciting dynamic styles, both really dominant on the back end side and play really aggressive. So, yeah, it can definitely be a match with a lot of rally. So, it'd be a good one, I think. Following that, then the doubles, TTD, Fusion. What do you do for the doubles? Do you put the founder in 
knowing that he may get a little bit of a warm up ahead of his singles match, or do you leave him be and put your best two out? Uh, it, yeah, it depends what point of view you're looking at it from. Because for if I'm you know playing position three like Founder is today, I'd always be keen to play in the doubles and get myself sort of going for the next singles game because it's quite tough if you're playing match four and you sat there for quite a long time and suddenly have to go in a bit cold. So yeah. And I think we've never really had a great history with our doubles record, so playing technically our best two players might not give us a massive advantage, so I'd always go for that, personally. Let's throw it back into the booth. Pocket Rocket on the table, getting warmed up. What we got going on in the chat? Lloyd Gregory. Yes, we love Lloyd. Lloyd here. Looks like there's two gaffers on the bench. Let's try and have a look. Oh, I think he means George. Yeah. George. Oh. The gaffer lookalike. <laughs> the Greek god. So, fun fact about George, uh, obviously, as you can imagine, we get lots of players that turn up to the ping pod here and say, I'm a former pro or I was very good. I played for the national team when I'm a junior. Um, and more often than not, that is not the case. They've just bought a bat from Toys R Us and they're playing for the first time. But this guy, George, turned up and went, I'm a former pro. I'm a bit good. He went on against you. And how was it? Oh, he's great. He's. I mean, the first time he played, you could... You could see he hadn't played for a long time, but you could get a feel for his level already. And and now he's obviously been doing some coaching here and practice. He's, yeah, you could see he's really good. He used to play in Pro B in France. Um, yeah, and he's a great guy. It's Obviously, he's helping out on the bench today coaching, so great to have him. Yeah, we're hoping that uh, once we get him back to full fitness, maybe he could be a player for Team you TTD in here. What do we got going on in the chat? Never heard of Josh Dye. You are going to enjoy watching him play. He's a very good rallier and a big backhand once it starts flying. Him and the founder are going to be a similar level. Um, so that will be an interesting match to see. I'm expecting a few a few be. good rallies there. Uh, let's have a look. Well, so we've got a lot, a lot of questions about and conversation about pips on here. I'm not really sure what's happening there. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to bring back the smash speed gun testing? We actually filmed a video uh, out in New York, didn't we, with uh, some yeah. of the ping pod guys, some of the pros, some of the amateurs. So that uh, I think is a video that's going to be coming out over the next few weeks. Let's. Oh, have... I've got a question for me, Ooh. Yuvan. Tom, can you give us some tips on? <laughs> getting consistent i mean yeah a lot of drills on just being like really slowing it down and just focus on putting the ball on the table i think people often overcomplicate it and also depends on your game style my game style really relies on that and other people don't so i think not necessarily a good thing to practice for the sake of it but if that's your game style then definitely spend time on it so yeah play to your strengths basically i would say that's my strength but it might not necessarily be yours we got a question. Has anything been planned with Pongfinity, the frog? <laughs> oh, we've never had that question before. I'm shocked. <laughs> Pongfinity, that is definitely something that's uh, on our radar, let's say. <laughs> yes. Uh, by the way, Krianga got injured. Uh, the Butterfly Legends. He did, unfortunately. Nothing too serious. Don't worry. We're actually working on getting him back into a Team TTD match. Uh, I think we will see him sooner rather than later. Talking of Kranga, <laughs> here comes the pocket rocket. I saw Jans mentioned about possibly a, a low frame rate or the interlace. I think you might be meaning this camera here. So yes. what I'm gonna do is keep off it for you guys. We're gonna keep between these two cameras here. We'll Good feedback, Yam. Fix that in the meantime. Pocket them. He's gonna fire it up early. Like you say, he's played Larry a lot. Oh, home advantage, cheeky yeah, it's a, net. So home net. Bring Mar along to the team TTD team. You know what, Raging Inferno? We were actually scheduled to go and film some content for the Waldner Cup, which would have featured Mar Long as a captain. Hopefully, that gets rearranged, and we will be there, and we'll get you some content with the consensus goat of table tennis. Okay, trying to do the right thing. Oh, just sniffed long. Mm. Tried to spin it up, just missed it. Fine margins. I thought Pocket was going to serve then. Here <laughs> we go. The drummers are starting. You'll notice Pocket tends to serve with quite a basic backspin serve, but more often than not, it's a float ball. So meaning there's no spin on the ball makes it incredibly hard to receive. If you come in short. Oh, nice. 
Also with that float serve, I think what it's what it does is if you serve with a lot of spin, often the good opponents they can work off that spin and really be aggressive with it. Whereas when you're serving float, like Pocket does well, players can return it tight, but they can't necessarily be very aggressive with it. They can't do a lot with the ball, so it's quite good from Pocket. Oh. Oh, that's that's definitely a donkey right there, I'm afraid. We still need the donkey graphic to come up. It was a beautiful flick though to set up the chance from Larry. Came in with the forehand flick. Oh, that one deserves the replay. Straight out the gun. Look at this. If I had this in my armory, Tom Maynard, I would never play forehand again. <laughs> Look at that. That is some whip, isn't it? gone for it again. You'll notice as well, Larry technically very, very good with his legs. Uses a lot of his legs, really crouches down and comes up on the ball when he's trying to play the backhand. See if he does it here. It's explosive. Oh, doesn't need to. Right on cue. Hey, <laughs> well, just looking at the TTD bench there, only one of them's got a full set of hair. Full head of hair. Go ahead. Lucky from pocket, trying to be aggressive behind the scenes. So you might see Chairman a bit tired uh, today. The reason being he has been hard at work in the ping pod because if you look at the crowd, the man sat down on the furthest left is a name called Dave Hadley. And Dave actually played up here the other day, went to lob a ball, tripped backwards and managed to somehow sit, making a considerable dent in our plasterboard wall. So the Chairman has been put to good use. Larry coming in with a lovely forehand flick again, but Pocket just then reacting to it, playing it straight back to the right elbow. Extremely hard to play a good, decent flick and get out in time to play an aggressive ball. Very spinny. Serious power does Larry, doesn't it? All of that power coming from the legs, coming from the waist, really rotates through the ball well. Points have swung. Larry was 6 4 down, now 7 uh, 9 7 up, sorry. Pocket them with two of these serves. Larry, three set points to take the first one. And I think he was 5-2 down, if mm. I remember. Yeah, he's done well. That's good. It's kind of a case of who can get that aggressive shot in first with these two, really. I feel like they're both very good on the front foot and, and perhaps a bit weaker when the other person's attacking them, putting them under pressure on the holding game. So it's kind of who can get that strong ball first. Serving from the middle. Whoa. Good from Larry. You saw the difference there in the two. We try and watch the replay. Both of these guys have very good backhands. Pocket though likes to take a step off the table, whereas Larry holds the table. If you look, Larry stays nice and close. Pocket backwards. Always yeah. got to be careful when you take a backward step just a bit too far off for that last one. And it, 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 obviously you can hit a good shot, but just the margin for error and like the risk is obviously a lot higher when you're away from the table. When you're close, you've got a bit more, a bit more chance to be safe with the shot, obviously. And when you're closer to the table, you have more angle as well. Yeah. When you're away, you cut off a lot of your angles. Yeah, you limit what you can do, like you say, yeah, exactly. What have we got going on? Lee asks, is Larry the son of Larestus? He is. We expected Larestus to be here, but I think he's got a slight injury. He pulled out of a tournament last weekend, yeah. pulled out of today. Hopefully he's back yeah, firing he's soon. Son, yeah. But yes, yeah. What's, what? we got? What's Tom and Pocket Rocket's highest ranking? Mm -hmm. Mine is 11 in the UK. I'm not sure about Pockets. I think around maybe similar at his highest. Um, Pocket okay, really needs to work on his backhand punches and counters, not always about topspin. You know what, that's a fair point. You know, sometimes you can't always topspin everything and having a good angled block or a little yeah. guided punch, active block, whatever you want to call it, is uh, is a useful shot. But yeah, Pocket does tend to like that topspin top spin mode. It's kind of his style. Yeah. Yeah, loves the spin. 
Let's have a look. Got another one for you there, Joe. When are we going to see you play a game? Oh, well, again, we've been talking last time about possibly recording some of the uh, local league stuff that we do. So obviously Gaffer, Dan, uh, the founder, and uh, chairman, and the tech guy, and myself, we all play in the local league. And I think we might film a video and see if you guys uh, enjoy it. And yeah, if it's, uh, if it's good, if we get some good content, I think it'll be more comedy than sport. But hey, it might go down well. It's just like setting up at a firing range, Larry, and he serves <laughs> and then he just winds it up. Legs. Everything to do with Larry. Legs, good rotation through the ball. Takes the ball nice and early as well. It's very clean. I think Pocket, similar to Callum, could do with not keeping it in the backhand corner. Go for the early switch. Something that you do really, really well. Yeah, agreed. There's a lot of like of that backhand diagonal in this match from both of them, to be honest. And I think you're right. If he can switch that wide to the forehand and get it less of that comfortable backhand side, it would help him a lot. Here, Pocket. Yeah. Again, look right into that backhand corner. Larry's just there waiting for it. It's like having his cup of tea, drinking it and going for that backhand. Again, if you're going to go out to that backhand, you've either got to try and keep it short, you've got to try and force Larry to move his feet. Mm. Either force him to step in or force him to take a backwards step. At the moment, everything's kind of landing mid-range, which means Larry can just serve, plant his feet and bomba. Bomba, that's a great quote from Werner Schlager, that. Oh, yeah. Gotta love him. Come on, Pocket. He's got to step it up here. He don't want to find himself quickly 2-0 down. Better better spin on the open up there. There's a good variation. We landed it a bit shorter, but a lot of rotation. Hard for Larry to counter that one. This is a back and battle. It is. Leg day Larry. Yeah, it is. That's a great shout. That's Leg his nickname. Day Larry. I like it. Have we ever thought about making a women's team? Again, we... we you must have our phones bugged, you guys, because we were having this chat the other day that we... Definitely something that's been discussed. Grafting. Larry's just looking a bit confused and bamboozled as to how that actually missed. Turn just... around to the bench there. I think we were just sort of saying, oh, on earth did I miss that? But we'll take it. It's a better receive. Much better receive. Let's see if we can catch it on the replay. You can see this one doesn't go to the back and it goes to that center line of the table. Much better. Larry can't just plant his feet and bomb that backhand. There we go. So serve receive out to the forehand. You start to win some cheaper points. That one's just landed on the roof. Pocket tried to do a leg day Larry on that. Just mistimed it, top edged it. Still up though, 6-5. Oh, yeah, that's tough. The first block, he ended up being a bit passive. He was. Yeah, he needed to go over it, didn't he? And Larry just had time then, didn't he? Much easier said than done though, to be fair. Larry course, obviously yeah. spins the ball. Maybe it's realistic to do some content with the young Chinese that are playing in the French League. That would be... I like that idea, yeah. Great shout. Zhang Peng or Xu Yingbing, yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome. We would need to have a translator. <laughs> ah, just drifting along with the return there. <laughs> that ball went past NASA, yeah. I think it did on that backhand top edge from Pocket. Oh, right over the table. Have a look. Oh. Some replay not working for us there. I'll make sure I click the buttons, the buttons better next time. I want you to watch then on this serve, receive. You'll tend to see Larry, as the ball gets thrown up, he goes straight to a backhand grip. Watch it. 
straight to a backhand grip. There. I mean, if you can serve into that forehand, the first thing Larry has to do is change grip. He yeah. has to change. I mean, even on even on that point, he played a really good first backhand. Pocket switched it immediately to the forehand, and like you say, if he's changing his grip, then having to quickly play a forehand, that's Absolutely. not easy. Right? It went in the net. Split second. So Larry coming in like this. At least if you can serve it, he has to at least change. Just bring that back round quickly. Yeah. yeah. I just feel like these are the points, aren't they? These nitty-gritty nitty points that if you're losing those, it's eight all. Suddenly you're under pressure. Final. Two serves for the pocket to take this second set. What are you thinking tactically here? I think if I am pocket, I would be tempted to serve either short backspin or short float into the forehand. It's got to go to the forehand. It doesn't. Ooh, that's let. Let. If you're going to go long, Larry is going to attack it. You have to counter off it. You can't be passive on that yeah, third he's, ball. He's going to be great. Oh dear. He's got away with that. The serve, I felt like the serve was a bit bouncy and Larry was sort of a bit hesitant. Unfortunately, it opened up one in the net. Ah, yeah, again, that, that first aggressive topspin, Pocket is really struggling to hold it off, like keep that low or at least, you know, make the next shot difficult for Larry. Yeah, I think, yeah, if, if game plan wise, you've got to try and serve short. And then if you are going to go long, it has to be aggressive it's long. Be really quick. And then, like you said, if you are serving long, you've got to obviously expect he's going to attack that ball. You've got to be ready to come over it again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I would agree with you, Joe. I think he's got to get out of this backhand area. He's got to play. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm pocket, I'm trying to play him forehand, forehand right now. Yeah. Back pocket's backhand's obviously his strength for right now. In a backhand to backhand game, Larry's matching him and now actually bettering him. So I would get that game into that forehand half and see if he can beat him at forehand top spin, top spin. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to test it. Yeah, absolutely. And then once you're going forehand to forehand, you've started that kind of pattern, that's then when you can start to tee balls off up the line. Yeah, exactly. He's, if more. Larry's then out wide in the forehand and coming back to backhand, it's much harder for him to be aggressive because he's moving into position rather than just waiting for that ball, you know? Mm, what do we got? Is there a phone app that shows the ranking in the UK? There's not, but there is a website. If you go to tabletennisengland.co.uk, rankings, you'll be able to find it all yep. there. What do we got? Thanks, TTD, for being the best TT YouTube channel. Yes. <laughs> Why does TTD you. never go to Asia and do reviews with them? Well, it's a very good question. Part of it, obviously, um, around language, uh, difficult to communicate back and forth with kind of the, the level of info that, that you guys would want. Obviously, um, it's a travel long way to time go. as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely something we want to uh, expand into the Asian market, get a bit of a footprint there as well. Definitely. What else we got? Pretty, pretty well caught up in the comments there, I think. Are we going to have a TTDSL season three? So, so Luca, no, basically, we had the TTDSL for two years, and uh, this is in replacement for that. So we're now playing the Premier British League instead of that, but who knows in the future. Pocket with it all to do then. Two sets down. Longer serve, we said it. And a bit more aggressive that time, the serve, not a, a slow, long serve. It was good speed in it. Oof. Larry's going for the strawberry there. He ended up with a melon. He was at the fruit stand. Left his wallet at home. Larry with a lovely combo. So a long, fast serve into the backhand. Hold your ground and you punch back up the line. Really nice. Tell you what, we're getting some lovely holiday destinations thrown in the comments. Oh, wow. Right. The instant replay's working. Leg day, Larry. Here it comes. Ooh. Ooh. Beautiful. Oh, we're missing oh. a big point. We're in. Pockets off screen. Oh. <laughs> just got, I just got excited. <laughs> yeah, why don't TTD go to Spain or Australia? That's what I said, there's some lovely holiday mm. destinations in the comments. We would need to get a TTD estate agent or a, a travel agent. TTD goes to Benidorm. Can you imagine Chairman in Benidorm? I'd be easy on his absolute element, wouldn't he? He'd be loving it. He'd be more tan than the locals. We could... It's a timeout, okay, I think. Yeah. A time. It's a good time. It's got to be done. 
George is up off his seat. It is a good point that you make about the Tangs. If you look there, George, who stood up, giving the team talk to Pocket. So that's how highly rated that George is, that he can give the team talk here. George, the natural Grecian from Greece. And the chairman's more tanned than him. Unbelievable, yeah. I mean, chairman, in fairness, he's out, out every day on the building site, lifting his blocks about, shoveling cement. You know, so he's out in the elements 365 days a year. Great work. Great work from Chairman. He's got the best work ethic in the world. He definitely does. We need to see the Chairman playing in the league. So as I mentioned it, he plays in the Bristol League with us. Uh, yeah, we might try and film some content. It probably won't be a live stream, but we might try and film something and see how it comes out. Let's have a look. Oh, a bit of a technical question there from Steph. So where should my thumb be when playing the forehand on the rubber or at the top of the handle so not much in that if i'm being honest is yeah not like you say not much in it i would always say on the rubber um because if you if you definitely want the rubber the thumb on your rubber for your backhand so therefore if you're gonna have it on there you don't want to be switching between on and off so i would say always on the rubber and then it might go slightly higher on the rubber and more for more like pressure onto your from your thumb on the backhand shot but you i would always still keep it there on forehand Ooh. Went for it. Then it's another serve received into the backhand. I'm not. You're not loving that tactic, I'm are not. we? <laughs> ah, yes. Now, I, th I tell you what, Larry's doing really well here. When it's in a 50 50 rally, he's keeping his stability and balance mm. and body position a bit better than Pocket right now. Pocket's just getting caught, like you saw that last point. You can push back. Oh, oh that was class. <laughs> need, a, need a doorbell. Found the wide angle really nicely here. Look at that. That's where the gap is. Oh, here we go. Pockets fired up. And so's the drummer. You can see the drummer in that far side there. Yellow, kitted out like he's in the Tour de France lead. Just, uh, just every time Pocket seems to win a good point, just can't get that run going. Not much momentum. Those cheap points are almost worth double at these points, right? Yeah, especially now at 2-0, you're under pockets under real pressure to not make those mistakes. Awesome. Good backhands from Larry. Pocket needs to throw it all in the mix now. He's got to find something if he's to get back into this the short float serve that we mentioned. Again, like from a, yeah, from Pocket's point of view, he's given Larry that chance again there to go for it. I know Larry's missed, but it's the right shot from Larry. He's winning the game with that shot. So Pocket's just got to get out of that as much as he can. It's difficult, right? When backhand is your strength. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is what you mentioned. Go forehand and forehand with him. There you go. You got him off the table there at mm. least. That was it. That's what you've got to do. You can't let Larry stand at the table and just fire bombs at you. Oh! Oh, hold that one. Hold this ground. Sounded a little bit edgy. Maybe not. Didn't say sorry. Only pocket wood. Didn't Eight see it. it. just seemed pumped. Chop. Mm. Pocket does it quite good actually. He does a, a lot of float serves, like you said earlier, yeah. but when he does the heavy backspin, it looks very similar. Yeah, it's obviously butchered. There it is. Launch sequence initiated. Needs a good receive here. If you're going to go into the backhand, it has to be with some element of pressure. Yeah. No. Oh no. Oh no. Or on the table. <laughs> Come on, Pocket, this one now. He's got to be brave on the receive. You don't want to be indecisive here. Oh, he's done it. Again, pushed Larry out to the wide forehand. Drums are going. Good from the pocket. So again, won a few cheap points just going out to the forehand. I know it's difficult when your strength is a backhand. Yeah. But when you're playing someone who's equally 
doing the backhand better than you. Let's just get away from it. No, he's got to do it. He's hundred percent. I think he's got to do it more. I think he's got to keep doing that. He, he managed to force him away a couple times there. Um, yeah, and a couple of mistakes from Larry. Obviously, his game is aggressive. He is going to make mistakes. It's quite high risk. So if you can hang in there, pocket, um, you'll give himself a chance. Definitely. Yeah. Let's have a look. What we got going on? Angelo says he always plays with his index and his middle finger on the backhand rubber should he learn to do it with the index only. So absolutely, yeah, we don't want those two fingers on. Obviously, you're going to play with the backhand. You, you want as much rubber as possible, right? So we only want that one finger going. Yeah. Then you can switch between the both. Yeah. TTD, better, currently better angles than WTT. That's great to hear. Look at this. Why is Tom commentating? He's the best in TTD. I tell you what, if you could have pulled <laughs> off that victory against David Macbeth. Oh, gutted about that one. Yeah, thanks though. Thanks, appreciate it. I'm, uh, I'm commentating here just, you know, Thought I'd help out, add a bit of uh, fun to the stream where I can. Um, yeah, I'm injured today, so not playing. So hopefully I'll be back soon helping helping the team on the table. Look at this, Joe. You were playing sick last weekend at SBL. Oh, I love it. I'm not sure I hopped straight off a flight from Montreal. Had about four hours sleep. Oh, and you know what? Sometimes when you are tired or when you're feeling a little bit ill, and you're like, you know what? I'm just going to try and play. You don't yeah, put any pressure. Expectations low. Yeah. You have, yeah, like you say, no pressure on yourself. Here we go. Look at surrender in the ground, though. He's got to try and get back in, you feel. Oh, he nearly did. Larry, though, super aggressive. I just realised our drummer with the yellow shirt and the yellow hat looks a bit like Wario from the Super Mario games. <laughs> That's a great shout. We need to get him a fake moustache for next time. That's a great shout. We need to get that drum going, get fu uh, Pocket fired up here. Ah, uh, yeah, again. Passive. Yeah. A bit passive. Not quite sure what to do with that shot pocket, I think. Spinny. Again, to the forehand. All the mistakes. Oh, I say all. I mean, a lot of the mistakes from Larry have been on that forehand side. Yeah. Oh, the drummer's adding some, uh, some energy there. Nice. Good spin. How good is it to have an audience at table tennis? Yeah, it's great. Adds to the atmosphere, gives you that bit of energy boost sometimes. Do we have a window looking onto the court? We don't. We are watching on the TV screens. Oh, here we go. Take off in 10, 9. Elon Musk would have been proud of this. Takes it so late. One so hand low. on the floor as well. Starting to tune up the band. So that was better from Pocket. Okay, so again, we don't like the idea that he's just going loose into there, but if you go in there, Larry is that good, he's going to get a clean attack. You go after that next Do ball. something with it, yeah. Wherever it goes, go after it. Hunt it down. Ooh. That was good. <laughs> the one I just heard them shout, come on, counter. That was exactly right. I think that was the gaffer there, just adding that bit of uh, key advice. And there it is. Oh, there's some energy from the crowd. Love it. <laughs> there it is. The trademark came out. Look at this. Very good touch play from both. Keeping the ball nice and short until Pocket fired one long at the hip. Look at that. Beautiful. And again, don't mind you going backhand to backhand Pocket when you do that. Almost another big one. Go, go, 
a go, pocket. Heavy oh, spin. That's clever from Larry though, he didn't get into the bang bang, quick rally, he gave Pocket a slower spin there, didn't let him get that, um, you know, the big fast ones going that he has been. Like you say, he's very clever, I wouldn't be surprised if he tees off on this one. Yeah, ups the speed, look at that. Oh, Swap hands! Oh. oh, even the founder on the bench, he had his head on his hands. Oh, oh, oh. Head on his hands, hands on head even. Nearly something special from the Pocket. He's so athletic, look at him. It's like a little ninja. <laughs> I'd love to be as athletic as Pocket. <laughs> Gaffer and his clone on the bench, it's a great comment. Pocket almost became became the Dane, yeah. yeah. That's a good serve. <laughs> oh, Larry there, his big show of emotion. He's seen all his teeth at once. Very good from Larry. Got forced off the table, pocket just holding. Are we doing really well to change the spin, change the variables, the pace, the location? Oh. Let's have a look. He just pounced on that one, didn't he? Like a, like a tiger on a bit of steak. And this is always a danger if you serve short float mm. a lot. Look at that. Especially if it's a little bit oh, bouncy. is looking troublesome for Pocket now. Two point going to the forehand. Still there. It is. Support from the bench and the crowd. Oh no, kicks it long. Larry takes it, does a dance. Good performance from Larry. Such power. Tough on that for Pocket. Really tough. Yeah. Levels up the score, then 1-1. One, one. At least uh, Dragon Gate gave us that good start. And uh, obviously Pocket there, struggling, tough game. Larry played well. 1-1. One, one. Heading into the doubles. So a pairing from TTD and a pairing from Fusion. You've got to imagine the pairings are going to be Callum, the Welsh Dragon, and Pocket from TTD. And from Fusion, you would have thought it would be Larry and Josh Bruce. Probably the first two that have played, yeah, I would imagine. But you never know in doubles, sometimes if players have a particular pair or someone they're really used to playing with, they, they end up putting those in. Maybe they want to, maybe yeah, the guys on the bench want to get the founder warmed up. Who knows? So we'll see. Absolutely. We've got a question from Lee. Which Scottish player would you take for TTD? Rumgay or Colin? You know what? I'm going to throw something else out there. I've mentioned him every single time. He is the bomb maker. He hits nothing but missiles, Martin Johnson. Oh, if Martin I Johnson. am in charge of the summer transfer market, I'm making a big bid for you, boy. <laughs> Love it, yeah. Scottish players you take. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, probably Colin uh, for me. Mm. Colin, uh, he's a super nice guy, first of all. Really good backhand, hard to beat, never gives up. Like, I think he's just got a lot of good qualities. I can imagine he'd be a nice, uh, good teammate to play with for sure. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to I'm gonna love you and leave you and bring someone else up into the commentary Ooh. booth, hopefully. See what uh, characters I can find down there. I'll leave you in the capable hands <laughs> of the voice. I'm going to uh, check out some of these comments then. So Rob Mart says it's time for the lollipop serve. Yes. So the uh, the chairman regularly, that'll be another thing about Bristol League. If we start to film that, you're going to see the chairman uh, bringing out the lollipop serve. What do we got going on? Why doesn't the Dane play? So great, uh, great question as the chairman comes in. Look at him. He's got his lunch. I was just uh, just saying about your uh, your lollipop serve that oh, you yeah. like to do. Yeah. And make sure. Do you want to pop these on? Sit, sit nice and close so we can hear you. Hi, everyone. Here he is. Yeah, the, we were saying about the uh, the lollipop serve that you that you bring into the Bristol League. Yeah, I don't use it as often as I should. So. It's like the LeBron Brothers one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What we got going on in here? Joe, can I show the schedule again? Of course. Let's hit the button. So, Chairman, 
One one, both sides. Yeah. Doubles up next. Paul and game is doubles, I think. Do you have any inside knowledge on who is playing for TTD in the doubles? Yeah. Who is it? It'd be Pocket and Callum. Pocket and Callum, so we're going full strength. We've got to save Dan. Yes. Uh, yeah, so a little bit of insider knowledge. What's happening with Dan? He, he a bit of a spasm in his back this morning. Yeah, so we've uh, dosed him up with painkillers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully so, they kick in. <laughs> So the founder is dealing with a little bit of a back issue. Had a couple of cramps earlier, but I'll be honest, he he was warming up again and looked good. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's all a mental game. Once the adrenaline kicks in, hopefully that will bring him out. Yeah. Let's have a Got to be like the old man, play through the, play through the pain barrier. <laughs> Let's have a look. Can we get a comprehensive video on the chairman's topspin? Backspin bluff shot. <laughs> Even I don't know how I do that. <laughs> it's the chairman. The chairman's in the chat. Come around and say hello right, quickly Dan. for the guys. Just What's up, talk guys? about you. Wow. You enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Just hopefully I can see how I get on. Yeah. And it's there. The pain is there, but hopefully I'll be all right. It's annoying, but I've been training hard for this as well. The beast has said, "Who's playing doubles? Hopefully not Dan and Tom." <laughs> yeah, there he is. Yeah, definitely don't do that. Uh, no, we got Pocket here, haven't we? Pocket and Callum should be good. Pocket and Callum coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Look at that, Miles Collins is in the chat, all the way from Australia. Amazing. Yeah. How are you thinking then? So this is 1-1. One, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Set up there. Pocket started to get going. No, he did, didn't he? It, it, with that game, Larry and Pocket, whoever actually got the attack in first was winning, you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah, oh, Larry's got... Uh, one of the commenters said, leg day Larry, because every yeah. time he hit a backhand bomb, he would... Dip right down into a squat and come he's flying up quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, he's a beast. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lee. The uh, the bicycle tube is still on the handle of my back. It's good grip. That's a yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, it's brilliant. So yeah, you know, I sweat a bit, don't I? And you know, back gets a bit sweaty. Yeah. And... Yeah. All right. Enjoy the show, guys. Let's yes. put this deep heat on me. So yeah. yeah. See how it gets on. There we go. Yeah. Chairman's in. Come on. We've been saying about doing some Bristol League videos. So maybe not live streaming them, but uh, videoing it and like the drive there, all of the fun oh, stuff oh, that we get going that a good on. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> we said it would be more of a comedy than an actual sports yeah. sports show, but yeah, we could watch it. We got any questions for the chairman whilst he sat here and whilst we got a little bit of a lull? Wait to see the, the clump shot. Hey, TTD team, will you upload the full Maze and Dane match? So that is a great shout. So that is hands down the best match of table tennis I've ever seen with my Me own too. two eyes. Me too. These two went to absolute war with each other. And uh, we've actually said about um, filming it. I don't know if some of you are... Uh, um, familiar with the Joe Rogan podcast, but some of the some of the breakdowns that he does, they'll have the match on the live uh, watching on the screen, and then all of us will sit around and talk it through. And we think we're going to do that for Maze and Dane just to relive it and talk through some of the points because it was that good. And the feeling of the pair of them was phenomenal. Yeah, it was absolutely unbelievable. They were they were hitting trick shots against each other. One would hit a trick shot, the other one would get it back with a trick shot, and then they go back into bombing, and then another trick shot. It was just yeah. yeah. It really showed you how good the Dane is. It was a pleasure to watch. It was good, yeah. Yeah, to see all of the legends, it was it was great. I mean, Schlager was just hilarious. Oh, he he, form, he? he should be a stand-up comedian, because yeah, he was, yeah. yeah. No, it's good guys, and I think they had a good time, didn't they? They enjoyed it more than us, which came through on the video, which was really, really yeah. good, yeah. Yeah, what do we got? Answer the Dane question, please. I can't see what it was. If it was about why is he not playing, uh, it's because he plays in Denmark currently. Same as the Beast. The Beast plays in Germany. And right now in England, you can't play in certain leagues and play in the English League. But I think that rule is changing at the end of this season. So watch this space. Get everything crossed. We may see the Beast and the Dane in the black shirts of TTD here in the Ping Pod playing next year. Uh, Ponda, no, no one smokes in uh, the team, which is not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman yeah. sounds like he smokes, but he doesn't. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> <laughs> it's all the dust from work, all the cement dust. The Legends video was great. Thank you so much, Hank. We had a lot of time, uh, a lot of fun filming it. What German team is the Beast playing for? Well, the Beast is in the chat. If he's still in here, I'll let him answer because my pronunciation of Grunvettersberg is not going to be great. Who is the chairman's best TTD double team? Says Sam. Who do you think out of everyone in the team? Uh, what did you say? 
Me, you. That is, we are, Kepha. I think we're undefeated in the Bristol League, you. Yeah, yeah. Out of everyone, out of everyone in TTD though. What, the best team? Yeah. I would say, you know what I would like to see? Captain and the Welsh Dragon. Yeah. I think they could just dominate with and, their forehands. And the German. And the German, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my vet's ranking is about 100 in the vets. There surely can't be. Over 40s. Oh, there can't be 99. Better people in the UK at your age. Yeah. Well, I'm 60. <laughs> uh, there you go. The Beast coming in. ASV Grunsvetterbach. I hope I said that right, too. Uh, follow their Instagram page. They have an amazing Instagram channel. Shows you lots of the first team, the second team. I think we are just about to go. Charlie. First thing to always say about doubles, you'll see the guys between each serve. Look at Callum and... Uh, pocket there they'll point they'll make a gesture with their hands to let their partner know what type of spin serve they're going to do so Callum they're pointing with the forefinger pointing down that normally means back spin serve you'll be able to see it obviously a lot better from this side when Josh and Larry start to do it Beautiful length serve from Josh. Gonna cut to the booth. Look who's having his sandwich in here. Rustling away. You're in a big point as well. <laughs> Where is the captain? We didn't see him in the TTD knockout. Yeah, the captain's just taking a little bit of a break, a little bit of a sabbatical. He uh, He's obviously played table tennis for a number of years, was a very good junior as well. Great fit from Larry. Um, but the cat got married uh, last year, so just taking a little bit of a break. I think he's playing golf, but he's always in the group chat, supporting the boys. He put in a good message earlier, firing everyone up because he used to do the team talks. He will be back before we know it, I'm sure. Drums are starting. So you can see Josh, see if he tries to do it again, trying to drop the ball nice and short to Callum's backhand side, the right hand side of the table. Things one down. The middle. Good partnership of pocket. Got a great sense of how long that serve was from Josh. It only just creeped over the edge. Callum, though, full confidence, picked it up. Great backhand from Josh. going on in the chat where's the ringer so the ringer's actually uh great point the ringer's actually gone back to poland uh his partner has had a baby mm. so he's gone back there again i'm sure we'll see him there's leg day larry it's back then, so solid isn't it? yeah it explodes up into the ball really gets low and then springs up See how difficult it is to return serve. Firstly, Larry's serves are absolutely butchered with spin. But then you've got Josh Bruce as well, waiting up the other end. Anything that's half loose is going to get on. Let's chuck it back in the booth then. The boys, 1-0 down. Fusion taking the first set. Martin says there's only one doubles team he wants to see, Beast and the Dane. Yeah, that would be very fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. That would be good. Beast with the left hand as well. Shout out to Ronan. I'm always up for a game whenever we both are back at Porter's Head. Let's have a look. Will we be watching the German TT finals, Beast? Pocket needs to get close to the table and fire up that backhand. There is 
Obviously, Pocket likes to take two steps off the table and big rips, but it puts you under a bit of pressure in the doubles. If you're, if you're Callum, I'd want him to stay up nice and close as well, like you're suggesting. Stay up there. Yeah. Good time to join the stream. It is. You'll be able to go back and watch the first two matches as well. Where is the chairman? He sat right here. He was just being quiet in that whilst he had his lunch. What have you got for lunch? A little ham and cheese sandwich? Ham and cheese, yeah. Smoked ham. Oh, beautiful. Very nice. Let's have a look. If we were to film the Bristol League, I've started something here. When would it release? Uh, well, I mean, there's no reason why we couldn't just film it on our iPhones. Throw it all together. Yeah. We might have to, we might have to put it on TTDX. I'm not sure the mainstream audience would be, <laughs> <laughs> it would be interested in us. Pocket then, on the receive. It's tough playing doubles with someone for the first time, isn't it? You know, where they move. Yeah, the serves. What kind of serve receives they want. And where you play, so for Callum, really important where he plays this ball as to where Pocket wants it, right? Yeah. So you see Callum getting in there with a good aggressive attack, goes into Josh's forehand, but that is going to normally mean that Josh plays back into Umir's forehand. Sometimes to think about you play there, nice. Josh went for it. <laughs> Again, if you're, if you're Callum, if you're the worst dragon, sometimes be thinking about what shot you want Umir to play. You want to yeah. try and team up for that backhand. Yeah. The sound when Larry hits the ball is so crisp. Straight through it with all that power. Pocket just getting caught out in the short touch touch game. I wonder if instead of trying to touch short, he's better off just barreling it long. Oh. And it's that way it gives Callum something to swing it. the receive really well. Came in aggressively. See Larry serves. Looks like he's coming in with some backspin, but also he's putting side spin on the ball, which makes it really difficult to see. Josh Dragon applying lots of pressure to Josh's backhand there. If you watch the Welsh Dragon, he actually comes in like he's going to play a short touch and then flicks it. He gives a fake, look. Touch, bang. Just changes it at the last minute. Beautiful receiving from the Welsh Dragon. Gives them five set points then to level this up at one, one apiece. Fusion saves one. And so there two serves. It's sometimes strange in doubles as well, where like you're four evenly matched players, but just the pairings can sometimes 
uh, yeah, some some people don't like uh, the third ball that comes back from a certain player. We find it a lot as well. And I yeah. know it's obviously a lower standard, but yeah, different partners that you're playing against can sometimes mean that one set is really clean to one team. Yeah, yeah. You swap, and then the next set it yeah. flips completely on its head. Yeah. It's almost what we saw there. Yeah, really good from the boys. Really good. What's going on? Why isn't the captain here? So the captain, I'll say it again. He got married. He's on a slight sabbatical. He will be back shortly. Let's have a look. We hope. Yeah, we do hope. Who would be my dream team for TTD? I would pick Fan Sheng Dong, Trolls. You've got to have one of the LeBron brothers. Simon Gauzy. And at five, if we had an injury and we needed to bring someone in, Martin Johnson, you're coming with me. <laughs> Let's have a look. Big ups to the TTD boys. Chris, loving the commentary from the chairman. <laughs> I'll take that. I ain't said a lot. <laughs> Here we go, then. The drums kicking up. Third game. of you for that one you could see you made points down backspin serve expected yeah, and yeah. it was slightly longer as well i like it again the idea being if you keep doing a short serve you do a short serve to stop them from attacking but if you keep doing it oh, it becomes predictable that is a beautiful forehand flick from larry larry yeah, points down well, well from today isn't it? Mm -hmm. Good play. Both lads from Fusion have massive power. Who's your favourite player in the world? Shin Dong, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Apple. Yeah. I think you'd get on with Fan Zheng Dong. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> what, in a bar? <laughs> I know we featured it on the Legends video, but when Kranga was there warming up for the first time, so the Legends are all warming up. Kranger's just cracking backhands and he looked around and obviously he's never met you before, doesn't know who you are. And you said to him, you've got potential. <laughs> good boy, good boy. And he did not know what to do, did he? <laughs> good flick there from Callum. We saw it in the small screen. Good boy, good boy. Good boy. He should get down there soon. Got a small bench there, Joe. You do. Two boneheads. Then can Callum possibly fire this serve receive to follow Josh? So fire it to wide forehand. Josh Bush just stepping in with the backhand. Beautiful towel break. Every six points you're allowed to stop. This way. <laughs> Larry picking up that service really well.
a good receive from Pocket. Maybe a little bit short on the table. Josh could get after it. it forced him to run after the ball. Gave Cullum a chance. Eat all them. See if he goes short backspin. See if Cullum comes in for the flick. Oh. Cullum spanned that ball up really nicely to Larry's right elbow. Really uncomfortable place to try and play a shot. Huge. Very good. Let's watch it on the replay. Pocket at one point was on the floor. Really good from the boys, just absorbing. Pocket heavy spin. And it gives them two set points. Need a good receive off this. Can't go loose to Larry's backhand. He's too good there. If you're going to go there, it needs to be with some pace. It's set up really beautifully. That's his favourite shot. And it all. is. You would have put money on him making this. Larry's asked for the backspin serve. It's got to come in. Oh, twice it's slipping down. It's nearly there. Ten all. Fusion boys save the two points. I feel like if TTD, the moment they take a step back, either of them, they're in trouble. Yeah. Have to try and stay close. Have to try and redirect traffic. as aggressive as they are as Larry. Sometimes you can catch him with a long, heavy backspin. See how the pocket picks this up. Is he going to try and sniff it out? It looked like it creeped half long. Back in the push exactly. Yeah, that point at 9-10 from Callum. Brilliant touch. Callum just came in, touched it back nice and short. Josh Bruce serving to try and save this set. A lucky break, but it gives TTD the lead 2-1 in this pivotal doubles match. You can see Larry and Josh just a little bit disappointed there. The boys take it. What injury does the Fander have? His back went into spasm earlier today. Mm. And, uh, so he got a little bit of a cramp in his back, isn't yeah. he, in his leg? Too, yeah. too much stress on the lead. There is, yeah, these big... I thought I was going to have to step up and play, Joe, to be honest. That would have been interesting. Quite pleased I never... <laughs> You against Josh Dye. So Josh, I've seen, I've played against Josh many times. Oh, yeah. He's a rallier. Yeah. So he likes to, similar to Pocket, likes to take a step back. But he would have, he would have taken much glee, I think, in lobbing you off and set, uh, sending the ball up to the sky. Uh, the clump would have been on overdrive. <laughs> it would have been fantastic. I love the way that Dan and Tom released a instructional video about how to smash. And you were the example of what not to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a bit brutal from them. <laughs> eh, what we got going on? in the comments yeah everyone complains about nets being lucky yeah so they i mean they tend to even out right i'm sure we've all had those matches where you kind of feel like your opponent's got five or six against you but we've also had those matches where we're like sorry after the fifth or sixth one but in your head you're like come on so it tends to tends to even out chairman should use long pimples yeah i've been contemplating that if yeah I'm getting older you know short pimps i Conk. think yeah yeah then I think, nah. <laughs> Lee's asked, who would we want in the TTD ladies team? That's a good question. I think we're, the ones we're probably closest to at the moment are, the, are some of the Welsh girls. So Charlotte Carey, long-term friend of TTD, Welsh number one, Welsh number two, sorry, behind Anna Percy. But again, 
absolute bomb maker. When you watch some of her highlights on Instagram, um, she's she's very impressive. So we definitely get Charlotte involved. Uh, Anna obviously has been involved in some of our. Videos. Such Don't spin. go through the wall, pocket. Yeah. Just mended it. <laughs> we were saying that you uh, you were on um, plastering duty this week. Yeah. I only painted it yesterday. It's <laughs> a great receive from Larry. Look at this. Often we think about a, a, a push being a negative shot, but actually if you can get there and aggressively send it low, get it landing deep in the table, it can be absolutely devastating. Look at this. That is such an aggressive shot. So you miss a, a big one. But it does show you that often people think about be aggressive and you think you have to attack. You don't have to attack. Use these backspin balls to your advantage. Great touch from the dragon. Killing the ball dead. Gave Josh no option. Go! Come on! From the pocket. Set up the point the right way though. Callum with a good touch. Josh coming in, forcing to push long. Going to Umir's backhand. Feels like they're trying to spin the pocket rocket off. Yeah, again, Josh coming in, putting as much top spin and side spin on the ball as he possibly can. Look at just struggling to deal with it. Callum's short game is really good. It is. He's serving his short game really underrated. And that forehand, the forehand rescue is the frog corner. When someone hits a big bomb into his forehand and he's slightly out of position, he's able to just maneuver the ball back into play. Yeah, the silent assassin did play against this team when he was away, but he's gone a bit quiet lately, isn't he? Uh, he does. He doesn't live in Bristol, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Popped. Oh. point. All sorts of creative shots coming out there. Fusion boys, Larry smiling into a four point lead in this fourth set. We should do a video on how to deal with anti-spin Dylan. Oh, just drills it. Yeah, we'll come back to that anti-spin point. End of the set. Right idea from Welsh Dragons. Saw it pop, tried to come in. Not many long deep serves. It's true. I think it's because all four of these players attack those long serves really well. But they're trying to keep it as tight as possible. But there's always, always worth in firing a long serve out there. Cheap point. You can afford to do that when you're 10 3 up. Callum calling the backspin serve then. Apologises because it drifted. And there we go, just like that. We are into the fifth. Let's throw it in here. Uh, what have we got? Oh, so Dylan, so videos on how to deal with anti-spin. So yeah, absolutely. We should definitely start to look at different profiles of player. Maybe a player who has a really good backhand. What can you do to it? to adjust to that or someone who's got a really big forehand who likes to pivot as well how do you deal with that yeah the the theory with anti-spin is that if you go at it like a normal rubber so if you hit maximum pace maximum spin you're going to get some really horrible wobbly ball that comes back to you and that's what the anti-spin guy wants he wants you to tee off at it actually if you give it nothing if you bonk the ball give it no spin nice and deep on the table actually all he can do is bonk it back to you and that ball that then comes back is the one with no spin it pops you can then crack that first one. So yeah, the, the, the first point, the first phase of the point, if it's a serve or a serve receive, give them no spin, try and give them not much pace, that ball will pop, then you crack the life out of it. Uh, yeah. So they can't produce any spin whatsoever. Exactly, they can't produce their own spin, so they're solely relying on you putting spin on the ball, and then it comes back to you. So what you often see is like the juniors or the more inexperienced players will try and go at the ball more. They'll try and put more spin and that messes them up more. 
give them no spin, it pops. And equally, most of them have it on the backhand, which means if you go at their right elbow, that backhand's going to creep here, and they'll play a weak one to here, and you can tee off either side. So yeah. similar to long pimples. Yeah, exactly, it? right? Yeah. yeah. Long pimples, again, a little bit different because they tend to reverse the spin on the ball. So if you go heavy backspin, they push it, it'll come back top. As long as you recognise that, you then crack that next Isn't one. Isn't it what the anti-spin does then? Anti-spin does not, no. I thought it did. <laughs> I thought it reversed it. No, no, it just, it kind of wobbles it. It's, yeah. Anti-spin is, uh, long pips are the ones that are really vicious. So if you heavy spin at it, they're able to give you heavy spin back. Anti will give you a bit of it, but not. Oh, it's there. Pitch Pong, yeah. Pitch Pong's channel is really good. Uh, also, he does some really good um, breakdowns. He plays in the German League. I think he plays in one of the divisions below the Beast. Um, but very, very good. And he breaks them down tactically. So, yeah, definitely recommend checking out. I think his name is Seth. Yes, this game is just getting a little bit open. The Fusion Boys just starting to find the rhythm. Early timeout called by George in the TTD corner, just trying to stop some of that momentum. Uh, sounds so easy with anti, absolutely, yeah. So anyone who's really experienced that uses the anti, that twiddle, they'll tend to be used to those weak receives. Um, but yeah, um, always different, always different tactics, but as a general, that's what we try to do. Let's have the look, what else have we got? Can't wait for the Welsh Dragon and Larry. Yeah, so again, I feel like Larry will have the advantage in back end to back end. I feel like Callum will have the advantage in the serve game, the serve receive game, and the forehand to forehand. But you never know until they get on the table and, and start flying. Boys, back on. Back down there. When's the Pongfinity video coming? Well, we've got to film it first. We've got to book it in the diary. Predictions for Dan's match. So, Miles, Dan and Josh, similar in ability. Um, I would say Dan probably slightly ahead in ability, but stylistically, Josh is a rallier. Likes to keep the ball on the table. More than happy to be back at the end of the court, just fishing the ball back in, which could be a bit of kryptonite for Dan. As long as Dan's back holds uh... 5-1 then. Fusion boys take the early switch. See if Callum gives us one of those short touches. One them. Right Two six. It's got to be good on these third balls here. Yes. Much better. Josh attacked it really well, coming in with the banana flip, putting lots of side and top on the ball. Look, it was aggressive. No, come on. Heavy spin from Larry. Push the ball long at him. You still be able to just adjust. Keep it short on the table. 8 3 lead for Fusion. Put a lifeline. Oh. 
It's going to try and be aggressive. Get another aggressive. Aggressive push. Let's see if they can do the same again. Unlucky. Opportunity was there. Now or never then for the Dragon and the Pocket Rocket. Callum might try and push this one long. Really well. Drifted. Dribble. Yeah. I was thinking that four points ago when he touched one short, Josh got a really, read it really well and came in. Not sure he's going to try the same again. Yeah, pushed it long. There you go. Callum's so smart. So Josh, more than likely, is going to get a good attack off this. Oh, great shot. Fantastic from the pocket. He was off balance and everything there, Callum. Timeout called. See if we can have a look at that replay. Oh, we joined it too late. It's too slow on the button. But really good. You know, when, yeah. when no matter what serve you do, even if it's short back, Josh has got such a good backhand flick that he's going to come in and attack it. Yeah. Pocket has to be aggressive no matter where it goes. You yeah. have to attack it. Be interesting to see what Callum does here, whether he sticks with the short backspin serve, knowing that Josh is going to come in, or whether do you be a bit sneaky, throw in a long, oh, fast well, serve. Yeah. I'd go for the short. Yeah, play, safe. It, play it safe. Yeah. Let's have a look. Make them earn the point. Make them earn the points are really, really good. Come on, Callum. Oh. Oh. Fusion boys kept their foot down. Again, same principle. Does Pocket try and keep this short? Or do you try and bang it long? Bang it long. Open rally. Yo! Fusion take it with the dance as well. Gotta love it. Keep going. Really good. Umid in a good serve receive there. Pushing it long. Once it opened out into the open rally though, felt like there was only ever going to be one winner. Fusion then. Take it, 2-1. Smiles on the faces, look at them. More than deserved. Great doubles performance by those two. What do we got going on in the chat? Might be time for my Adriana Diaz no look special. You know what, how she did that first time of asking the spin, it's fantastic. Let's have a look. Which four TTD boys could create a boy band? And what would we be called, Chair? I'd be the manager. You'd be the manager, would you? You'd yeah. be the gaffer. Yeah, you yeah. wouldn't be on the mic? No. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to sing karaoke, what song would you go, though? Have you heard me sing? Uh, no, but I can imagine. My, my first ever karaoke song, I'm too sexy for my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that as Wind well. Went down like a lead balloon. <laughs> uh, chairman, have you given any lessons on your lollipop serve? Or is it something... You've only been able to share with your son, Pocket, and Alexi Lebron, who does it, and it's yeah, world class. Yeah, he's been watching my videos. He has. Absolutely. Yeah. Do we do VIP packages to the British League matches? Would love to travel down to watch. Uh, I mean, yeah, come on down. We have tickets available on the app. Uh, obviously, down in Bristol, so wherever you are, you'd have to travel, Lee. Um, but the guys are more than happy to, sh uh, to share pictures. They'll do selfies with you. We'll get you up in the booth. Are Josh Bruce and Pocket playing? Let's have a look. They are not Josh Bruce. His next match is match six. You can see it there, the founder. And then the Pocket Rocket against Josh Dye in the uh, final match. Keenan says, say my name, Keenan. Well, there you go, Keenan. I've said your name, Keenan. Uh, Pocket should have hit that forehand instead of the block. That changed the game. It's always difficult, like you say, uh, with players this good. 
you almost can't afford to just passively block the ball on the table. You have to go at it. Uh, yeah, which is a little bit difficult. Does the Welsh Dragon play in any other leagues? Good question. I'm not actually sure. We'll have to ask him if he if he does come up here. What's the total score? So at the moment, Fusion TTT are 2-1 up against the TTD boys. You can always see it if I show the camera. You can see on the big screen there, Fusion behind them on the TV screen. Uh, one, and then back behind the TTD boys. Uh, sorry, Fusion got two, TTD have got one in there. So, so I'm gonna get down there, watch me boy play. All right, you give him the pep talk. Nice chatting to you, mate. Great to see you, the fans love to have you here. All right, so again, we said it earlier, these two very similar in ability. Josh has a good backhand, very good backhand, similar to Pocket's backhand, a bit of a big swing, likes to step off and, and really swing through the ball, but he is a rallier. He likes to keep the ball on the table, more than happy to extend points to 10, 15, 20 shots if he can. Dan obviously nursing a bit of an injury that we're not sure about how it's gonna play out. It looks good here, he looks structurally very good. So see how he goes this is a pivotal match what we've got going on in the chat hello from belarus hello pixel cat good to have you with us where are the captain and the ringer so they have both taken a little bit of a break from table tennis um but i'm sure they will be back they're always in the group chats laughing away when we put videos in there yeah uh, is the dane playing he's not he plays in denmark at the moment, the rules in England are you can't play in certain leagues. Same for the Beast. Uh, you can't play in certain leagues and play in the English League. But we think that's changing. See ya. The founder takes the first point. Change to this view. There we go. We got a young fan in the building. Everyone trying to get the founder fired up. Trying to get that third ball in. Picked up high. Oh. Let's give it the replay that deserves. So from the first serve receive that Founder kicked up, you know he's going to try and attack this backhand. Josh predicted it really, really well. Step the corner. Boom! Short side of the table as Adam Bobro likes to say. Founder then 2-3 down. What software are we using for our instant replays? We have Streamlabs, which means nothing to me. I just press the button. Beautiful. From the founder, really good. Backhand up the line. I mentioned it earlier, Josh likes his backhand. A bit like that. So again, anytime anyone loves a backhand, you can get a lot of joy going to their forehand. Founder needs to play up the line a lot. Into the forehand. Drums are going. And I think it's within the founder's interest. Be aggressive, try and finish the points early. I think for Josh, it's probably in his interest to take a little bit of pace off and extend the rallies. Both of them, they're very happy to receive serve on backhand, try and spin up early, try and attack early. Oh. 
It's a great serve received from the founder. Fired it off. We spoke about it earlier. Just because it's a backspin ball doesn't mean it's negative. If you can get it deep and fast on the table, Josh span it up heavy. The same combo as earlier. Josh with the topspin served to the backhand. The founder not finding the line. He goes back into that corner. Josh just pivots, bangs it up the short side of the table. Backhand to get into the point by Josh. Founder blocked it really nicely into the forehand. Josh kept the pressure on though. Massive points. I think the founder has to go out to wide forehand here. No matter what it is. And he did. He's obviously got me on loudspeaker down there. So now, do you bluff? Can't go into the backhand, I would say. Feel free to go into middle table or go wide forehand again. Don't go straight to the backhand. He tried it. It's unlucky. 10 all. This is as close as it can be. The dribble. spin founder went for it right tactic just overcooked it slightly tried to go into the forehand both of these are so aggressive on their backhand serve receives the big bomber Werner Schlager would be happy with that if he was in the corner. Got some great comments coming in. I'll answer them. End of this set. Josh Dye takes the first one, then 13-11. I said it. I think it's in Josh's benefit to try and extend the rallies. Founder just trying to. And maybe it's because of that niggling injury. In the back of his mind that he suffered earlier. It looks pretty good. Just trying to rush and throw it back into the booth because we have got the gaffer with us. Gaffer, how's it going? Pleasure to be here, voice. Yeah. Well, this is a very tight match. You know, we've we've played Fusion over the years, TTDSL. In the first leg that we played them at home was was a lot of tight matches there. You know, so we always knew that this one was going to be a tough match. But yeah, Dan here is. Uh, He's, he's struggling a little bit um, with, with a bit of a niggle and an injury, and you can kind of see it in his, in his movement. I mean, we know that he's not the best mover on the best of days, but uh, yeah, close one there. I'm fortunate not to take that first set. Let's have a look what we got. Can we get the Silent Assassin playing in the home games? Yeah, it's a good shout. He played, obviously, he played the away fixture, didn't he, for Fusion? Yeah, Silent Assassin. Um, we wanted to see a lot more of him this season. Unfortunately, he's, he's not been available. Um, but we hope to see him more next season, potentially. Absolutely. There's a comment I saw as well. Joe, do you think you could beat the Dane with a 6-0 lead? <sighs> That's rough, isn't it, Gaffer? The Dane's playing left-handed, yeah. maybe, potential. With, uh, with an eye patch on, Josh found that wide frame beautiful then. Yeah, the Dane. You know what's worse about the Dane? You know if you could even get it to 10 all, you know something really stupid is about to happen. He's going to handle shot you. That's better for Founder. That's a better backhand. A bit more control. Missed quite a few of those in the juice game from the previous set. Yeah. To hold the ball on the table. It's a very swingy player, is this Josh Dyer. Yeah. No, he's got his shots. <laughs> his shots have a lot of the time got good margin for error. Doesn't make a lot of silly mistakes, but does go for it when you put it into that forehand, like just then. It's just starting to get in control of this. Yeah, found a struggle a bit. Just needs to get that ball into play a little bit more than what he's doing at the minute. 
I think both of these, for both players, try and attack the other's wide forehand. Neither seem to be moving that well to cover that off. Both really happy on backhand to backhand. That's nice. That's nice spin. You could see Fountain just had a split second whether or not to go for the pivot four on there, but I think he's been told by the bench, stay on the backhand side. Oh! oh. Flicked the net, but it was a beautiful attempt. <laughs> Strawberry coming out. Because if Josh starts to get that ball wider into the Founder's forehand, we are going to see Dan struggle. <laughs> Fusion players into a 6-3 lead here on his serve. High toss. Yeah, he's starting to recognise Dan tries to attack everything on the backhand. Yeah, he's a clever serve here now, Founder. Nothing too long so that Josh Dye can't get an easy pick up on it. That's nice. Yeah, it was there. Changed it up a bit, went for the long far serve, got away with it. And the reverse as well, if you just hack it as hard as you can, really difficult as a receiver to know exactly what spins on it. You know, it's loaded with a lot. Yeah, into that wide forehand again. If he starts to expose that, it is going to mean trouble for Dan. Yeah, long, long, fast reverse serve. TTD alumni player, ringer. Oh, oh. Josh just on cruise control. Clean in house. Yeah, we're going to need to see something big come out here from the founder in the third set, I think. But it's not over yet. 10-5. There we go. Josh takes it 2-0. Founder needs to change it up. Yeah, needs to try and go after Josh's forehand a little bit better. Again, oh, serve short into forehand, the basics. Josh will come in, he'll either flick it or he'll touch it, then drive it to wide backhand. Yeah, I, th I think even at this point, it's just there's a lot of unforced errors from the founder here. You know, he's, he missed a forehand, he's been missing just serve receives. I think even if he just gets the ball on more, um, it's going to make it more difficult and then it's going to help get his confidence back but yeah at the minute the fusion player is cruising so he's going for those swingy shots those big forehand counters you know he can afford to miss one or two but you know he's two new up now has the founder got it in the locker to bring this match back yeah he's got it all to do definitely uh definitely needs to be a little bit careful on serve receive as well just trying to attack everything actually sometimes push heavy Josh will spin up, counter. Just simplify the game sometimes. We've got some, uh, got some good comments going in. I saw a comment from Sam, Gaffer, or any of the boys trying to soften you up and get in your ear to improve their chance at team selection. <laughs> Dropping you the text on the Friday night. Yeah, yeah. Am, am I playing? Yeah, I mean, I like to let the players know in advance when they're going to be playing so that they can get prepared for the matches. So, yeah, they, they normally are very much aware of who he's playing. Um, this one actually we wanted to play Tom the Frog but he is suffering from an injury at the moment as well so Dan did get the call up a little bit later on than, uh, than I'd normally like we've got starting this third set then so it's one all on the fusion player serve Dan gets a good backhand in there oh. good from Josh again that wide forehand mm. I don't think Dan's won a point yet when it's been switched into that wide forehand placement yeah, if he's going to do this, it's got to be the hard way. Yeah, just a long, fast pendulum serve into that middle there. Founder just not ready for it. Dumps it in the net. And yeah, now is the time if you're going to do a timeout and they've called it. I mean, he's, he's trying. You can see that he is trying. He's just maybe a touch behind you know on the wide forehands on just the, the attacking shots there tries to go for that backhand push it's just not working out at the moment for the founder but time out here in the third 4-1 the lead isn't that big at this point yeah if you can take this next one a good serve and you're right back in it you're only behind two 
Sander wants to win. He needs, needs to use the bridge. Yes, Dylan. I think he needs to bring the bridge out. He needs to just keep getting the ball on the table a little bit more. Um, the crowd here in the ping pod are trying to get behind the founder as much as possible. Support him. Something a little bit different. Mix up the routine. Yeah. Just start to do something different. Keeping the ball on there, you know, making the fusion player play that third, third shot, fifth shot, you know, and, and he's ground him down there. That's a nice spin in. Okay, a bit too passive there. Good from Josh. Look like our very own pocket rocket then. Take a step off. Come on. Big swing. Serve. And you heard Josh say that was lucky there. Oh. Oh. Gift. Fusion player. Thought we'd go for a backhand serve. The ball had other ideas. Yes. Two points. So he's half his deficit now. 5 4 down in the third. Getting a little bit more confidence, maybe. The Fusion player just making a few more mistakes. Oh. That is a confidence killer, that one right there. Got the return that you want and then just stuttered into the forehand. It's not very flowy right now. Yeah, see, if that forehand would have gone on, I've no doubt that that backhand receive would have flown on as well. But instead, we've got the Fusion player here, 7-4 up in the third. It's better play there by Dan, you know, safe, safe forehands. Josh dropping back off the table and then when he tries to go for his attacking shot, just can't get that power, goes in the net. I think for Founder, just a mentality switch. Stop trying to win the point on the third ball. Try and win it on the seventh ball. Because what that will subconsciously do is you play it soft. I mean, that's a worldie. But you play it softer. You get those, you recover quicker. I think there are gaps for him in that seventh and ninth ball. You just can't get there. I agree. This isn't, this isn't a done deal yet. No, it's 8-6. He is returning serve now. He's just got to get the ball in and go again. Oh. We had a ding dong. Yeah. Josh just super calm. Let's look at it on the replay. Held his ground. The moment he saw Dan step to his left, punched it up the line. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice and control on it. it sets straight, him up. Straight to his bat, didn't he? So he just need to move that placement ever so slightly into the middle. Oh. Two saved. It's not over yet. The, the funny thing is, those last two points, he's faced two match points down, and actually he seemed much more free playing that, that big forehand and then just really that loose wrist going into the serve. But is it too late? It is. Josh Dye takes it 3-0. Big win over Dan Ives. Puts Fusion now into a 3-1 lead. Up next then. We have the Battle of the Ones. The Welsh Dragon against Larry will prove to be a massive match. We know that the Welsh Dragon's forehand is an absolute missile. We know leg day Larry with that backhand is coming. It's going to be a battle of who can get their better weapon in against the others. And then all to do if TTD are to pull this back from the founder and the pocket rocket. Let's throw it back into the booth. Yeah, we're up against it now. If we want to try and get the win from this, we need the last remaining three matches. Yeah, it's very tough, very tough. But <coughs> anything is possible in this game. Um, but next match up, yeah, this will be a tasty one. Yeah. And looking kind of further afield at uh, what fixtures uh, we have lined up. So we've got North Ayrshire and we have Drum Chapel. Two yeah. games away from home. Firstly, are these dates set in stone, Gaff? These dates are set, yep. So you'll be able to catch these matches both on TTE.TV as they are away. But 
I'm feeling confident about those matches because they are against the teams that we did get wins. Now, they were home matches in the earlier on in the season where we managed to get that win. But hopefully we can do the same again. Yeah. And I mean, it's now or never, right? You need to win those matches if you want to stay in the division. Yeah, big ones. Um, I guess the, the hope is that TTD can field a full strength team. Get the big boys up there. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, um, you know, we, we always try and put out the strongest team available to us on the day with a little bit of a squad rotation in there. But like we said, been struck by injury in Tom the Frog. Dan, obviously, from, from that match up there, you could see he's not his fighting best. So, yeah, the, it's, the injuries have come at the wrong time of the season, really. You don't want them to come at all, but definitely not towards the end when we are battling to stay in this Premier Division. And that's going on then. Dragon versus Larry. Yeah, I mean, as we saw from the Pockets match against Larry, you know, if you are too passive, he will take advantage. He really will. Um, so I think Callum needs to be the aggressor the majority of the time. You know, he needs to he needs to keep things tight, um, and hopefully he can he can get the win there. He's definitely more than capable to to get this win and, and get us another point on the board. I think tactically we might see Welsh Dragon target short serves into Larry's forehand to try and get him stepping across and playing that backhand flick. We know that Larry's backhand flick is just very, very high level. Mm -hmm. So you've got to try and position him into a table where you can then third ball try and exploit him either going very hard into that wide backhand once you've made him step or wide forehand as well. Yeah, he's a very strong player. This young fusion number one takes after his dad, of course, Lorestas from Trompauskas, number one veteran player in England, has been for many years now. So not a bad player to learn from. Well, absolutely. And you know what comes with being Lorestas' son is you are very well versed in tactics. You are very well versed in mental warfare. Mm. You deal with pressure very, very well. So yeah, yeah. straight out of the Trompauskas playbook is Larry. Yeah, he's got a very stoic mm. mindset. Probably doesn't let much on the field you know from a from a mental mental game so something that pocket can learn a lot from actually i, I think because pocket when he plays he can be absolutely amazing world-class stuff and then he'll miss something that he shouldn't do and then you can see it in his body language and you know when the opponent starts to see that that gives them the advantage it's a confidence right mm -hmm. yeah Good comment there. Are we having another TTD Open this year? TTD Open. Yeah, we really enjoyed that event that we held. Because that must have been two years ago now. Um, we are focusing on other projects. Um, we've got a lot of a lot of good stuff in the works. Um, so most likely not another TTD Open for the foreseeable. Barry then came in with that backhand flick, tried to play it up the line, just overcooked it. Oh. Placement. Yeah, that's what Callum could do so well because he's not really one of these players that is going to get sucked into you know top to top and forehand rallies a lot of the time. He will mix up the placement. Big backhand there from Larry. He likes to backhand down the line. Yeah. He really does. Opens up his body well and just lets it go. Hits it really hard as well. Yeah. Most times when people play up the line, they have to take 10% pace off to get the ball on. See, it's a shorter distance. Yeah, Larry doesn't do any of that. Still cracks it. Yeah. And again with a forehand just now. It's a thing. He will pick up loose balls. That's good from Callum. Held his ground well. Made the fusion player make that mistake there.
Larry again there, just getting in that big forehand. He gets a little bit of luck there, Welsh Dragon, but manages to win that point. Nice little touch play to start the point off there as well. And then got a nice backhand spin to start the attacking. Yeah, same again. I like the positivity he's showing there. Not being passive, not doing another push. Attacking well. Yeah. Fusion number one read that very well. Played a lovely backhand up the line and Callum just couldn't quite get there. 4-6. Yeah, again, a nice backhand spin there. I think that's definitely going to be a tactic if he wants to take anything away from this match. Can't be passive, as I mentioned before this match started. Oh, a little bit of luck there from Larry. Puts his hand up just to signal he's sorry there. So first set, 7-5 to the Welsh Dragon on his serve. Big topspin rally there. Fusion player takes it. Switches the play nicely into that wide forehand. Maintained the table well. And got the point one. Good. Yeah, positive return there from young Trompauskas. Brings this back. to 7 all. Now leading in this first set. First time he's done that. Yeah, nice placement there from Callum. Just doesn't do a heavy pushed shot. But making the fusion player try to attack that one. He just didn't, didn't attack it quick enough. Let's it go too far down and it drops in the net. High toss serve from Callum. Gets the push he wants. It's just a bit too easy, that one there. For Larry, just simple push, block. I want to see a bit more there from the Welsh Dragon to be able to stay in a rally and be aggressive. There we go. Maintains that backhand hold well. Mixes down the line. And we're locked at 9 all here in the first. Who is going to take this one? What tactic is Larry going to play now? Is he going to play a short serve and try and go for the open up or is he going to sling it in long and go for a big counter? He's gone for the short. Some touch play here. Callum's off the table. Switch as well. That's a fusion player off the table. Oh! Out of our shot, Fusion player lobbing the ball back in. Making the Welsh Dragon have that donkey and that missed smash setting up first game point here. Big roar there from the Welsh Dragon. Not out of this set yet. Fighting for it, clawing that forehand back from a good Backhand down the line, open up from Larry. We are now at Juice with Callum to serve. Oh. Great placement there from the Fusion player. Gets that ball tight into the backhand corner. Welsh Dragon just couldn't quite pivot far enough round to get the forehand in. Sets up another game point for the Fusion number one. Oh, that's pressure for you there, guys. Serving the net at 11-10 up, game one. Back, even Stevens. Yeah. 
Now that's clever there from Callum because a lot of players would just try and throw everything at that forehand attack. But instead he went for placement, he went in for that middle into the body, now gets himself a first game point. And that's another full serve from Larry. Gives Welsh Dragon the first set. Very rare at this level of a game that you will see two unforced errors on the serve. But that is what we have seen. And it's gifted the TTD number one, the first set. I just went down there uh, to go and have a look courtside and you cannot believe how hard these two hit the ball. Mm. Yeah. It's obscene. We're gonna have to get some videos and post them on the social. The ball's just ping it before you've even seen what's happening. Yeah, this is uh, it's impressive. Yeah. I, I was watching then, so yeah, Larry made a few unforced errors, just gave it away. There was a big point as well that he won on the lob. Yes, yeah, 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 he fished him. We had a donkey from Callum, but Callum showed great mental strength there, you know, to stay in that set. He was behind. Mm. Um, actually, he was leading quite a lot in the first set, and then there was that, that middle ground, which is so important in the game, you know, and, and Larry was winning that. And then he stuck to it. You know, he stuck to the task. He made him play. He was yeah. aggressive. He chose the right placement was key. And, uh, and Larry gifted in the two serves He's in the net. Very, very powerful. Table Tennis Live commenting, what do you estimate these guys' rating are? I'm assuming that's a USATT rating. Um, I could be wrong. If it is USATT, probably the easiest thing to do would be look for David Macbeth, wherever he's ranked, because uh, in our last home match, the Welsh Dragon managed to get the win. Uh, so yeah, these two, yeah, that was a huge win. Would be very close to David. <laughs> It's a lucky net call there. They're the ones that you want when you're receiving, not the ones that you want as a server. Great flick. Read that serve really well. Popped up just a little bit too high over the net there. Pounced on it. The right idea from the Welsh Dragon. Try to switch. Took one to the head. Yeah, took it to the head, but he'll take it to the head all day long if he has to, if it means winning points. <laughs> oh. That serve just drifted long there. And you could see Callum was just put off slightly by the length of it. Dumps the return in the net with three all in this second set. Really good placement there. It's the middle of the table. Yeah, placement is so, so important in this game. You know, if that ball goes just a little bit more into that forehand hitting zone, and allows Larry to get an easy counter there, but instead just into the body, and it makes it really difficult then. Nice thing. wrist, nice wrist action there, and again goes down the line. It's definitely a preferred tactic from the fusion number one. And Callum just trying to guide it back in, hits the net and goes off. Hey. Hey. Fast one serve. Fast serve, a lot more popular in the modern game. Getting into that hard hitting counter style. Goes to the strawberry. It was rotten. I can open up mistake there from Callum. He was doing getting that on well in the earlier set, but just making a mistake on that one. touch of the net when does it start to become skill when you do it more than once twice three times 
Yeah, again, caught out with that long, fast serve. Let's see what the Welsh Dragon can do on his serve here. 6 8 down in this second set. That switch was just a little bit too easy, a little bit too telegraphed there. And Larry jumped on that one with a good counter cross court. Oh. <laughs> so, as we say in the UK, swings and roundabouts on those nets and edges. If you get them happen to you, they will come back. There we go. Larry taking the second set, levels it up, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, he was just a bit more consistent on the opening up and the, and the attacking play there, and, and Callum was just a little bit too passive throughout certain parts of that set. I think that was that was what gave the fusion player that one. Yeah, yeah, he was doing, doing really well in the short game. Um, and then when he did get in with those heavy spins, like you said, Callum, was, he, he was positioning the ball well, but it was just a little bit too soft. Larry able to just turn on it and bang it, yeah? yeah absolutely. Let's have a look what we got. Lots of talk about the MLTT. I can see, guys, are the Table Tennis Daily shirts still on sale at Shirtbox? Unfortunately, they are no longer available via our provider, Shirtbox. Um, we are in the market for a new provider of TTD kit for next season. If there's anyone listening to this that wants to sponsor or provide kit for TTD for next year, drop us a message, drop us an email. We are open to offers right now. I want to see a different color than black. I want an away strip. Yeah, we've talked about it previously. Um, I always we, get shut down. Guys. We used to have uh, pink as our away as our away kit, and obviously playing in ping pod, um, that was that was discussed for this season. But black is a is a choice of a founder. As you look around the court right now, there's a lot of black on display, um, and that is a that is a founder choice here. Much better from Callum. Look at this. Oh, I've pressed the wrong button I was going to try and give you a replay he was much more aggressive when Larry got in with that first spin up yeah straight back into the action aren't we here Callum off the table fishing well goes for the big forehand it's, it's a tricky one when you're off the table because you, you get the ball in well you know you're feeding the ball and you know it's making the other person play that one extra and then when, sometimes when you try and go for the attacking shot you miss Oof. Beautiful spin up. And the dragon anticipating now the long serves. It's a great touch. Look where he's positioning them as well. Slightly lucky, but keeping it to the middle, that middle line of the table makes it much more difficult for Larry to come in with that backhand and attack it. I'm going to call this now. I think this game is going to the fifth. Been so even all the way through, and I'm just looking at the score there. One, one, two, two. It's going to be very tight. Yeah. What racket is the dragon using? Have we got the equipment? If we haven't, we'll find out. Mm. Don't hand. Passive one up the line. Larry just ate it for breakfast. You can see Larry when he is owning the table he doesn't drift off he's just spraying the ball left to right to middle and it makes it so unpredictable where the ball's going next another good touch middle of the table it's clever very clever kind of half long on that one making the fusion player second guess what shot he should play just about got away with it again comes in with that long Long shovel kind of a serve, making the impo making the opponent play that next ball just a slightly up in the air. Good finish though. Oh, that was so well constructed there by the dragon coming back on that point. 
You see him get pushed off the table there. Look at that. Shovel shot back in. Really good from the Dragon. Good serve. Slightly longer serve from Larry. Dragon misread it. It popped. Dragon reading these long serves much, much better now. We've got one of our resident ping pod coaches in the comment section, Mr. Lloyd Gregory, giving the update on the Dragon's equipment. Thank you very much, Mr. Greggs, for that one. Yes, sir. Come on. It's just so much control there. You could see Larry was total control of that rally, even though Callum was trying to put it just slightly off to the backhand side. But Larry held his ground well. Still so tight in this third set as the Welsh Dragon goes through second serve. Dragon did really well because that serve received flicked off the net as well and he just adjusted. Yeah, a bit of fire breathing there from the Dragon with that big roar. He wants this match. Oh, butchered that. Hacked it long with backspin. Long serve. That's it. It's a big swing. Yeah, big backhand swing into that middle as well. Callum was doing not too bad getting the ball back from behind, but ultimately fusion number one won that point. That's such a tactical, just a little guide there. Wasn't, wasn't either a flick, wasn't a push either. It's just that little guide shot. Gets three set points here to take this third game. Beautiful. That's a confident man right there. Pivots, big forehand cross court, takes a third. Shout out, big shot, TT. Jamal, Dennison is in the chat. He's a fusion boy. Your boys are currently doing you proud, although the dragon's starting to roar, starting to just edge ahead of Larry. But yes, so far, so good for fusion as they have a 3 1 lead. Let's have a look. Tampa Bay, is this Trumpowskis related to the other Trumpowskis? It is. So the Trumpowskis you mentioned uh, is Larestus, Larry's dad. Uh, and Larry's not a bad player, is he? I guess you're not You're not going to be a bad, bad player, player if Larestus is your dad. Yeah, not, yeah. not bad at all. Larestus, great character, great player. It's a shame, actually, he's not playing today. He's always, Absolutely. always good value for money is Larestus a fighter and that's what we like to see at TTD. Someone who's got that real passion for the game. Yeah. How would I get on against Larry or Callum? I think, to be honest, I think they'd have a bit too much power for me. I'd be happy if I got to six points uh, in the set, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Is Frog up next? Frog is not up next, unfortunately. Uh, Frog nursing a bit of a hip injury, so not playing today. Up next is the founder, though. You'll be able to watch founder against Josh Bruce, who is a fantastic shot maker. So I'd expect... Uh, yeah, to see some fireworks in that one. And then rounding off the night is Pocket Rocket versus Josh Dye. I'll just let the guys know. So in the TTD team chat here, I've just got the founder saying that we are still going to win this match. He's saying that oh, Dragon is going to take this one, although not by Larry hitting that big forehand. Dragon's going to take this. Pocket's going to win and Founder's going to win as well. There we go. The fight is still there for TTD. Have we seen the Crocs mascot on MLTT? You know what? I love the idea of the mascots. MLTT are absolutely smashing that stuff. We need to do more of that. Well, there was conversation at the start of this season if we were going to get a donkey mascot, because, of course, that would be the ideal TTD mascot. But we thought, first season, let's focus on the table tennis. And it's been a tough season. Absolutely. Larry has come out of the traps, fired up. Oh, and again, takes the first five points on offer. Aggressive. I hate to say it, but I did say I could see this one going to the fifth. And by the looks of things, 
that is the way that we're heading, but it's still early days in this fourth set. We've got a slight delay on our onboard scoring, I think so. I think it's 5-1 to the Fusion player. There we go, we've played catch-up. Yeah, that was heavy spin from Larry. You can kind of see the indecision there on Callum, but he did go for it. Goes long. He's now 6-1 behind. All the momentum with Larry. I wonder if we're going to see something quite special in a second. Oh, yeah. I feel like we're going to see a big backhand sling. Yeah. We'll get ready on the uh, instant replay button. See, from a mental side of things now for the Welsh Dragon. Oh, that was coming there, wasn't it? <laughs> I can feel the gust of air <laughs> up here, man. <laughs> The mental side of the game now for the Welsh Dragon is he knows he's in a 2-1 lead. He's got a heavy, heavy gap between him and Larry now. Does he just conserve the energy? Potentially, by that serve off. <laughs> and go and wait for the fifth. I'm not sure. I think if it was me, I'd be trying to find some kind of momentum to be able to take into the next. Even if you win the next, you know, three or five points, you lose the set. At least you've got some kind of momentum builder. Finish well, yeah. Joseph. Yeah. Good idea. Oh, look who's in the chat. Got our TTD versus Legends star oh. of the, the, that video. Here we go then. We are going to the fifth. Gaffer, you predicted it. We'll call you yeah. Mystic Mac. Yeah. I've learned a thing or two over the years, voice. I really have. Um, from the sidelines, you know, from the sidelines, from the table, not Same. so much, but definitely from the sidelines. Yeah, you could always see it. It was, I think, whoever would have won that third set, the fourth set, you know, it, it would have been easy. And, and as we just saw there, Larry came out hitting Callum, trying to go for some of the shots that he was having good success with in the earlier games and just wasn't coming off. So I think in this fifth set, we will see a different Welsh Dragon coming out yeah. and he's really going to fight for this. Got to see some big chose. That's the thing about the Welsh Dragon. He's tactically very adept. So, yeah, he's going to, I suspect, again, start to try and tie up Larry into the middle and the short forehand of the table, knowing that Larry's strength is that big backhand bomb. Try and stay away from a backhand flick unless you've set it as a trap and you're going to counter off it big style. Yeah, I think Callum's going to try and... Instead of it being an open game and lots of rallies now, try and shorten it. Short, heavy, dirty serve into the forehand. Grease that spin up as hard as you yeah. can into here. Yeah, even, you know, long dig pushes, mm. heavy backspin, as you were saying, you know, making the fusion player have to open up. Where And then Callum needs to own the table, I think. He needs to put the pressure on the fusion number one. But here we go into the fifth. The TTD player serving. Oh, a great point to kick us off with. Callum switching into the wide forehand. Gets that point. That was the long serve. Try and make it dirty. Yeah, you need lots of variation now going into this fifth. You can't be repeating the same kind of patterns. Oh! Strong, strong from the fusion number one. Eats up the forehand receive from the dragon. Backhand straight down the line. Anything you can do. Beautiful long serve. That's that long the serve receive. We'll try and load it up. He comes in and it is vicious. Again, we always say it. People think a push is a negative shot. Not when you can do this. Look at that. That's aggressive. That's, that's white liner. Here we go, serve to the middle. So at least if Larry's going to come in and flick, he has to take that step right. And in doing so, he then opens up the left hand, right hand side to the table. Yeah, momentum. Strong. Momentum with TTD now. Timeout called from the Fusion bench. Yeah. Let's have a look. A lot of rating is in serve and receive. Yeah, absolutely, right? And, and that's where Callum at the moment just starting to stretch ahead. What have we got? Maze is slightly older than I thought. Not gonna lie. That's why he's a legend. 
He is an absolute legend. We've lost the feed on camera one. Let's just check. We've got the feed on camera three. Thank goodness for that. That is the last thing we want to do is miss the video of this. So Fusion then. Larry calling a timeout. 4-1 down. A very good time to call a timeout, to be honest. Try and kill that momentum that the Dragon's got. Dragon then on serve. Interesting to see what he does. Does he go for a dirty, greasy long serve again into the backhand? And bang wide to forehand. I think ultimately what needs to happen is Callum just needs to keep on being assertive. He can't start going passive. You know, and, and keep that variation, keep that mix. I think he goes for a short float. Mm. He loves a high toss short float. There it is. Backhand to backhand battle, and the Welsh Dragon comes out the victor as he goes 5 1 up, and the players turn table. Crowd loving it. Keep changing. Come on. Keep changing. You can hear the instruction from the uh, fusion bench. Yeah, that's the change. Heavy, slow spin into the backhand, then taking it straight to Callum's right elbow. But that's the one passive shot that Callum has played in this yeah. set so far. Just that backhand block, Larry latches onto it. Another one to middle. Yeah. Unlucky that from Callum because he didn't get dragged back further from the table. He tried to get the, um, he tried to get the control back in that point, but Larry Uses good placement, gets that point. Oh. Might be seeing a timeout yeah, here. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, momentum just felt like it started to change. This is as tight as it gets, isn't it? These fifth setters, it's with so much <laughs> riding on this match as well. You know, either Fusion take this match and take the overall the overall match and yeah. win, or, or TTD have still got a fighting chance. So this, this one was interesting because it looks like now Larry is the one who is changing one of the variables first. So he is changing the location of where he's spraying this ball. The person who changes the variables first, I think, so either the speed, the spin, or the location of their shots is going to be the one that comes out on top in this. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I think whoever's man maintaining the table and that control is, um, is, is going to be on the winning side as well. It's a jangling up here in the booth. Callum on the serve then. The Welsh Dragon, 5-4 up. Has the timeout stopped the Fusion player's momentum? We will find out. Yeah, yeah, it's positive though. I like it. Gets that long push into the backhand. Goes for the the attacking shot, and it pays off. Oh, that's strong there. It's passive from the dragon. Any time the dragon takes a back step, it doesn't look good. He's got to try and hold the table. Try and stay close. What Callum can do really well is even when he is slightly off, he can still chuck in that that pressure in backhand. But we're now even in this fifth set, six all. The fusion player has pegged him back well. But we might see again a, another dynamic get thrown in the mix here. You can never know which way fifth sets are going to go. Oh, look at the net. Muted celebrations because there was a ball that flicked the net early on, but the finish was beautiful. Ah! Callum needs to get back to making this dirty. Bit of emotion there from the Welsh Dragon. Knew that that serve was not good enough. And Larry gets a good flick in. Larry then, what a turnaround. 5-1 down to 9-6 up.
The dragon has to find something. I feel like this point is absolutely vital right now. Oh. And it's gone the way of the fusion number one. Sets him up with four match points. And I'm on the serve. And he's done it. Larry points to the ground, says this is my yard, takes the win 3-2 over the Welsh Dragon. Fusion go into a 4-1 lead. Massive rallies in that one. Swung both ways, Larry with the dance again. we got to bring some dances into Team TTD, haven't we? We need to win some matches. Well, that's true. Boys. We need to win some matches in order to do the celebration. So, you know, fair play to those guys. Yeah, taking the match for one. Um, but every match counts. Yeah. You know, every match counts. We are fighting relegation our first season in this very difficult Premier League in the British League, and yeah, I, I want to see these last two matches now. I want to see a lot of fight. Um, we've got the founder up against Josh Bruce. We saw a very lacklustre performance there from the founder against Josh Dye earlier on. He is struggling mm. with a bit of an injury, but I know that that it's, loss there for the Welsh Dragon is going to fire the last two players up. It's going to be interesting for the founder because his Vic, his his win against Victor Guanxi is who's very much similar to Josh Bruce, like a level above him. Very aggressive, likes to play big shots. That actually, he may just relax straight into it and start swinging. And once he starts swinging and they go on, we've all seen he has the power and the quality to cause anyone problems. Yeah, it's possible. Absolutely, it is possible. I think Fowler's got the game of the spin up of the dribble. Now, Josh Bruce has got a very good counter. So mm. I think early doors, if the Fowler does get that dribble on that heavy spin, we're either going to see two things happen. We're going to see Josh just absolutely <laughs> fly in, which we have done previously in TTSL seasons gone by, or or they might start popping off the table and that gives Founder a little bit more confidence. Yeah. If I had to make a prediction, I think Josh Bruce is about to earn himself a few Instagram clips <laughs> of round the net, behind the backs. I think yeah, it's, it's a tricky position now because Fusion have won the overall match. The pressure is off them, really. Yeah. Um, and Josh, when he gets into the groove, he is very, very silky smooth. Yeah. Um, but Founder, you know, might now be thinking, well, pressure's off of him as well, even though each match is really important. You know, just that mindset of when you're there and when you're, when you're in the match, you know, you know that you've, you've kind of lost the overall match. Yeah. It may just be like, well, let's just go for it now. I'm going to dart out of the comms. Yeah. I may be back or there may be someone else, but we need to get this cam one working. And with the founder down. on the pitch, that <laughs> leaves it up to me to run the cameras. So I reckon someone's probably kicked the power out. Yeah, potentially, yeah. Maybe it was a Welsh Dragon there on that, on that hurtful loss. <laughs> all right. All the best. Thank you, Gaffer. Okay, predictions guys, chuck them in the chat. How do we see this going? Is this gonna go any other way than a 3-0 win for Josh Bruce? Early signs are good. Oh! Where on earth has that just come from, Founder? That he found this beautiful angle, look. The founder loses 2-3. Josh Bruce 3-1. Lots of confidence that the founder's going to take a set here. Josh is very silky smooth. It's a good finish.
Gosh, applying really good pressure with that backhand. His weight's always forward. You'll notice that about him. Weight always forward. See the frog there has been called in. Oh, beautiful flick. The frog has been called in to try and get Cam One working. Power cables definitely come out. Need to keep it tight. Yeah. Oh, what a serve. Check this out from Josh. Beautiful. Look at that. Just nosedived into the net. Found us in it though. Six seven. Dylan, doesn't all posting all your matches on YouTube give you a disadvantage? Absolutely. But in fairness, I'm not sure how many people use the tactical analysis. I definitely would if I was gonna play against these guys, but another good serve. Knowing that Dan's hunting that backhand flick. Play it into the forehand corner. Good serving again from the founder. 9-8 up. Does he go for a cheeky... Oh, he tried to lift it, but it was butchered. I know them. Do not discount a long serve coming here from Josh in one of these two. Yep. Josh then, 10-9. Serving to win the first set. It was good from the founder. Pressure on the backhand. Spins the first ball heavy. Plays the next two flat. They're not just blocks. Look at that. Aggressive. In then 10 all. Oh! Flicks the edge, but it deserved it because it was a beautiful shot. If you heard it just before Josh served, Fusion Bench saying work hard, making sure that not to be complacent. Obviously, a skill discrepancy gap between these two. Can't take anyone lightly in this division, especially when the founder's serving well. Next one. So of all them. Josh is able to get a lot of spin on these serve receives. Keeps the spin from the serve. Very nice topspin serve. Founder kicks it long. Josh gets it done in the end, 14-12. Founder hands on hips. Felt like that was a chance that he's missed. And there we go. Cam one still out, as you can see. But a lot of the predictions said about Founder taking a set, and you weren't far wrong there. Spin is too much. Yeah, Josh, very good in the on the serve and serve receive, able to give a lot of spin back on his serve receives, causing the founder a little bit of problems. Cam one is back on. The frog has done fantastic work there. Yeah, I think Josh, little bit of complacency, little bit. He's very chilled as a character anyway. Um so yeah, he just needs to be careful that he doesn't lull himself into a bit of a sleep. Maybe he's just had a bit of a scare. He's got through it and he might get onto cruise control in this next set. Dan, yeah, spin heavy, spin well. Try and predict that, that third ball is going to come back once you grease that one. Try and play for fifth and seventh ball. Yeah, all in all, not the total car crash we were expecting, if I'm being honest.
beautiful shot from Josh. We got the gaffer back in the booth. That first yeah. set then, a little bit tighter than we were thinking. Yeah, I mean, it was very patchy from Dan, but the stuff that he did well, he did very well. Um, putting pressure on Josh, serving well. I think that's the key with, with the founder. Um, as you see there, serve off, <laughs> not great. Yeah, he just sometimes tried to do too much, mm. especially off of the receive like that. Just trying to, maybe trying to get the point one a bit quicker because of the injury that he's suffering with at the moment, but, oh yeah, that's great receive there from the Fusion player. Set getting away a little bit here. Oh, he's put it away well. It's nice. See, good serve, sets him up well. Show him really good fight in that first set. This one's got away from him. I mean, he hasn't got a receive on, I don't think, this whole set. So that does just go to show how important serving the turn is. It's a better one, though. Just took 10% off the power. Roll it in. Can't win points if you don't put the ball on the table. It's as simple as that. I think especially with Josh, Josh's style, he likes to have a rally. He enjoys having a rally. He, he, he's more than happy to keep the ball on for 10 goes and then the 11th one he's gonna crack. So he will give you the ability to keep the ball in like this. He's not, he's not like a Larry who's gonna aim any ball that's there. No, but he does like a big finish. He does. He likes to go for that big one after a few. But Fowler's not done too badly here, considering he was quite far down in this set. Pulled it back. Well, just one point behind now, 7-6 to Josh. Block though. Moved, got behind it well. Now it's seven all again in this second. We thought it was down and out. Yeah. Good fight here from the foul. This is what we like to see. Great comeback. Let's see if he can go all the way. Even these shots, look from Josh. 60% oh. power, he's, he's, he's on cruise control. He will give you the chance. I imagine his, t his uh, team talk in the fusion corner is going to be take this guy seriously, get him out of there. Yeah, they'll they'll want to finish this as soon as possible. Come on. Right idea. Dan inherits his dad's graft. He needs a bit of the chairman stuck in the mud graft here. Dribbles it in well. Gets a set point for this second. Who would have seen this coming a few minutes ago? Oh. Just goes for that wild swing there. Goes for the Hail Mary. Ten all. Better. Nice flick, good hold. Making the fusion player just play that one extra ball on. Absolutely. Good serve now then. Oh, Goes for a long float. Oh, great put away there by the founder. What Somehow a... comes back and takes that second set. We've got a game on our hands. He's done really well to drag that back in. It is a robbery. It is. The police are going to be called. I'm not sure how that happened. I really don't know. Really don't know. But... What he did well there was held the ground. You know, yes, he was making loads of silly, unforced errors to get that huge deficit against him. But then he started to shore himself up, just roll the ball on, get the flicks on, put the ball on the table and make the other player actually play. Yeah, absolutely. And again, like we say, Josh's style, he is flashy. He likes to go for the big ones. He likes to plant his feet and slap the ball and do kind of unorthodox things. He will give you a chance to have a rally with him. Yeah. Yeah. He'll hit a world-class point, Josh. You know, he's definitely got it in the locker, but they're not all going to be world-class. You yeah. know, but in order to even find out if it's going to go on or not, Absolutely. you've got to put it on. Here we go. We've got lots of love in the chat for Dan. Dan's not making any more donkeys. Ali, the founder, what a comeback. Yeah.
Chiquita mixed in with the pushes. The boys going back out then for oh, the second set. Yeah, I like the comment there from Manny Kantan. Dan, don't go too ambitious. That is exactly spot on there. You know, there's no need to because all that's going to happen is that he'll miss more than he puts on the table and it gives his opponent an easy win. Thick edge there. Clapped heavily by the home support here. Sometimes it is hard to see when you're not when you're not watching from a camera angle exactly how much of a table it hits. Oh, oh yeah. Had a bit of a no look there. I think it was a little bit of a no look forehand. Here you go. You like one of them or two yourself, don't you? I do. I did one at a local league match and uh, on, on Thursday night and someone said I should call it the mic drop, which I love. Which is great. The mic drop, mic drop from The Voice. Mm. Love it. Nice. They just, just up in the quality on those ones. Now they're just playing the backhand too far wide from his forehand side there. Got him out of position. Josh keeping the ball in well. It's a dribble. Oh, yeah. There's a but, big counter. But it's exactly what we said, right? Dan has to at least ra have Josh raise his game. Put the ball on the table so that Josh has to do this. Oh! oh. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There it is. Let's have a look. That's exactly what we want to see from the founder. Adapting. Bang, that is a oh, yeah. good receive as well. Oh. That's what I mean about the founder when the pressure's off. He knows he's not really supposed to get near Josh. Can just play loose. Yeah, held his ground well. He just goes long there on the forehand receive from the serve into his middle. But we are neck and neck here. 4-4, four, four, one game all. Let's rip that. That's nice, that's nice from the founder. You know, didn't go too soft, went aggressive at the right time and found the middle. That was a great placement. A little bit lucky, drifted. <laughs> so he said he is flashy. Got away with it. And yeah, they're, they're not all gonna go on. Some of them will do. And you just gotta clap though. You just gotta say, well done. But not oh. all the time. You know, Dan's reading this reverse serve nicely now. Mm -hmm. He serves a lot of topspin, mm. does Josh Bruce. Well, he likes to open up the rally, doesn't he? He's more than happy if someone attacks him because he's got such good hands. Oh, yeah, that. Just like that, yeah. That's where Founder probably needs to find the middle again. You know, like we were saying in pre previous matches, just one or two inches to the left or to the right, and then you're into a hitting zone of your opponent. You go straight into that elbow into the middle, it's much harder for them to get a counter on the ball. Just like that. Yeah, called it. Founder must have a headphone in, listening to the live stream. Yeah, he knows. He'll know the placement that he needs to hit. It's just every now and again, it's tough to do it, you know? This is what separates that real professional level. They'll be hitting that placement all the time. Oh! Whoa. There have been some... Ridiculous nets and edges. That was this. a dirty net. That is a beautiful yeah. serve. Getting the topspin though. Mm. You know, the 90% of these serves are topspin. Just that he, he dis disguises them well, but sometimes you just got to think, well, the last 10 have been topspin. Yeah. Good close serve. 9 8. So you're going to chuck in now, the founder. And short middle. Did he open up? Oh, that backhand was there, wasn't it? He did a bit of a pocket rocket coming out in him there. Founder's called a timeout. Probably just needs a breather. <laughs> <laughs> this is there. It's tight. The body language is good from the founder and and good for for us. What we're seeing from Josh, you know, head down, lots of shaking of the head. The, yeah, just... yeah, he's he's not playing his top level, Josh. And you know, I think if he was, then Founder probably wouldn't get near him, as we've said. But you know, you can't play your best all the time, yeah. and this is definitely an opportunity that the Founder Absolutely. can take here. Cheers from Uzbekistan. Great to have you with us as we watch the Founder step back onto the court.
Nine all, he needs to find two good receives here. Two good receives. Josh is probably going to attack off that and then attack your one founder. Yeah. Fifth ball. Lots of bets. This is going to be a topspin serve. It is. Sniffed it out as well. Yeah. Read the half long. Hunted it down. Mm. Gets a set point to take go. this third. Cool. Flick the net. Oh. A little bit of luck there, the Fusion player, to take this third to Juice. It's gone kick to kick. Loving the passion there from the founder with that Cho. He likes to Cho down to the ground. I don't know if anyone's noticed that previously before. He's not a big, shouty Choer. It's another long topspin fast serve to the backhand. Honestly, at this point, I think you should just expect the top's been served. Pound has come for the first. Oh, gave him one back. <laughs> Got to be careful not to pivot on every point. Josh will find that line. Hold the backhand now, Founder. Play up the line. Expect top's going to have to float. He has oh, done! Oh, there it We've is! called it! That is going on Instagram later. There it is, he's finally shown real good composure there. On that flick, head over the ball, boom. Finds the corner. Short float serve here. It's gone half long. It's gone up the line again. Very good from the founder, positioning it really well. Yeah, making the fusion player go right to left and right again. Long, fast to the backhand, likely. Oh, it's top spin. It's top spin again. It is. It's almost better to just guide that ball back in. The comments are going wild for the founder. Rising to the occasion. Oh, gets away with it. Gets away with that long serve. Josh trying to find the down the line corner. Just misses. Found him with another set point. He's got in. Big cheer from the crowd here at the ping pod. Dan takes the fourth. The drums, the drums are going. Beautiful. Those drums, it's like the Mines of Moria. When you hear the drums, you have to panic. <laughs> the founder though, just, he, he did exactly what you said he should do. Just take 10% off, keep the ball on the table and position it well. Really good. Absolutely, and I think, if he wants to take this match now, the placement where he's losing those points is when he goes harder, he needs to go into the middle, into the elbow, because if he goes straight into the backhand, straight into the forehand, we know that Joss will just eat it for breakfast on that backhand, and he's got that massive counter on the forehand side. So placement is going to be absolutely vital for yeah. the founder to take this match. Absolutely. What do we got going on here in the chat? That flick was like Lynn, it was. It's a beautiful flick. Did Fusion out strategize TTD and play their two and three slot? No, no, Josh Bruce is a higher ranked player than Josh Dye. Um, it's just that Josh played really well against Founder and Founder just struggled against him in that first first matchup. But yeah, we're seeing a, a great battle here between the Founder and Josh Bruce as we go back to the table. And Founder started well there, nice little dribble. Yeah. And interestingly, it was Josh who tried the early pivot. See, so Fowler's just made the mistake there of letting the ball come to him on that half long instead of going in to meet that, getting over the table. And it's holding for his life. It's a nice serve though, short, into the forehand. Yeah, something a bit different. Making the fusion player step in, making him move a little bit. Oh. Uh, again, went for something different there as well. <laughs> Shaking it out. A backhand serve is Josh Bruce in this one. Uh, pays off. Yeah. Every now and again, it's just good to just introduce something brand new that your opponent hasn't seen before. Makes them think. Absolutely. Yeah, Josh, if anything, is playing a little too clean. Again, when you, when you see the founder, he knocks all day with Tom the Frog, 
he knocks with Franziska, he knocks with Timo Boll and all these people actually like what Josh Dye did earlier really well. Just make it a little bit greasy, a little bit dirty. I mean, that's beautiful. Yeah, Just... a little bit too easy there. The serve not really fast enough, popping up a little bit too high. And Josh just picking that placement well. Another good serve. Just went a little too much on it. Got the fusion player here in a 5-3 lead in the fourth set. Good. Nice dribble there. Nice dribble. He waited, took his time there. Luckily, Josh hasn't got his, hasn't found his uh, zone right now. Otherwise, those last two forehands, I feel like they'd be flying on. But as it is, we've brought it back. Dan has brought it back to five all. Oh, flick of the net, but Bounder does really well. Unlucky though. Again, the pattern of the points are good though. Stops him for these high top serves here. Nice backspin. That is such a heavy backspin when the founder does that high toss serve. Gets the point here, and we're now equal with Fusion calling a timeout. Interesting. We had a comment, actually. You can see the guy stood up. Who was sat between Pocket Rocket and the Dragon? Giving the team talk, it's George, our Greek-seeking missile. And what we got coming in the channel, Dylan's asked, why doesn't Liam Pitchford play in the SBL? It's a really good question. Um, the truth, in all honesty, is he can get better matches elsewhere. Um, and obviously when you're at that level, you need to go and play in the best possible place. Uh, but yes. I think our strongest player this season is uh, probably Tom Jarvis, I would say, in the in the City of British League. Damien Provo. I was about to say Damien, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Player that we, yeah. we met in our first match against uh, Olmo. Um, but yeah, I think, for, I think for pitch, it's probably just a little bit stronger elsewhere, yeah. as, as Joe was saying there. Maybe the gaffer's going to make a summer transfer move for pitch. <laughs> we'll definitely be in the market for players, that's for sure. <laughs> Good from Josh. Although when we last saw pitch, he had a very nice watch on his arm. I'm not sure uh, the TTD wage structure will fit. Be like trying to bring Lionel Messi to you. Oh, found her. Scrape that out of his pocket, that one. A fade. Fade, dirty spin on that one. Josh didn't have a clue what to do with it. Dribble. Spraying the ball around. Oh! It's like the dragon. Oh, oh, that's a beautiful finish. Let's go to the replay. Josh just looked cruising. Hooks the ball really nicely. Look at yeah. that. Oh, had speed on that as well. Great shot. Founder in with the big show. Really wants this match. Definitely wouldn't have been happy with his performance in the last match against Josh Dyer. Wants to win this one for the team. Look at the net. What's the rule for timeouts? So one player gets one per match. Good from the founder. Being aggressive up to Josh's forehand, up the line. Owning the table as well there, you know, he didn't back off when he switched it into that forehand and I think he had it covered even if it would have dropped in. Yeah. So 9 all on the founder's serve is exactly where he wants to be because his serve has been doing all sorts of damage to Josh throughout this match. Towel break. It's a really nice receive from Josh, putting tons of side spin on the ball. Yeah, I don't, don't think the founder expected that one at all. Had a wild swipe. Short to the forehand and it's drifted. See, that's where he's just gone a bit too much in the tight points there from Absolutely. founder. You know, he's done so, so well throughout that whole set. Composure, good solid shots. And then those last two, just trying to win it outright when really... And just like that, you release all the pressure off Josh. You saw then, Founder did a, a drifty serve to the forehand, but Josh gave it a fairly basic receive. It's there, play 60% in, and instead you go mm. way too hard, yeah. way too much, and you just release like a pressure valve. Yeah. Now it's going in from Lovell in the fifth, and Josh, if you're, if you're in his corner, you're very happy that he's managed to get through that. 
Yeah, you've got to make your opponent play, you know, and a lot of the time that's that's the game. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you've, yeah. Got, you've got to make them play. And, and Dan hadn't really been getting outright winners, you know, yeah. for the whole for the whole match. Mm. It's mostly been grinding him down, using good placement. Mm. And he goes for goes for the two big ones at the end of that set and it doesn't come off for him and we're now into the fifth. He's got to try and serve to the short forehand or middle of the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fast one, fast one long serve has to be the unpredictable serve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you give him, if you give Josh a side spin, anything, he cuts it across like he just did there with the forehand. Yeah, he's actually served back to him for the first time in his life, but he's won the point there and goes into a comfortable 3 0 lead in this fifth. Just like that, you're 3 0. Look at the net. That was better though from the founder. Just control. Yeah, take a little bit of luck on the first first couple of shots there but needed to see it out and he did well oh. so founder has got it in his locker mm. he has got that big forehand in the locker but he needs to be in the right position to play it Oof. definitely got away with one there Oof. yeah he's brought it back to three all he will keep on fighting all the way it's the only thing he knows it's the table tennis daily way. <laughs> Grinded that in. Again, make your opponent play. You know, if he would have gone for something big there in, in and out of position, he's going to lose that point. But instead, he just gets the ball in. Ooh, that might have been a little bit heavier than he anticipated. Yeah. Disguise from Josh. Maybe it was a tactical long. Serve the first four sets, top spin, and now everything backspin. Oh, oh God. The pivot, he left the door open. Josh did not walk through. And instead, Founder goes into a 5 4 lead in this fifth on his serve. Needs to use this really well now. Chucking a short. Yeah, tricked it on. You can tell that he wanted it short as well. That's why he wasn't expecting the forehand cross court winner from Josh. Fowler does the right thing, just comes up as he executes that forehand, meaning that that ball just drifts long. A little flicker than that there again on that forehand counter from the Fusion player. Two big serves needed. Can't drift long. Oh. Has drifted. Great angle as well from mm. Josh there. You know, gets it into that arguably weaker side of the founder, his wide forehand. Sets him up really nicely. Oh, that was a showboater. <laughs> Doesn't pull off, and instead gives Founder a sniff of staying in this fifth set. Out to the wide forehand. Yep. You can pressure it there. Yep. Read it well. Over the table. Just unfortunate there. It was a long serve from Josh. Drifted long, but the founder had already stepped in, anticipating a short serve, and just misses the ball entirely. It's that side oh, spin. That's, that's an evil return. Yeah, founder wouldn't have liked that at all. Now in Josh, are we about to see something pretty special? We are not. The founder bumps it long. Josh comes through in a 3-2 victory to put Fusion in to a 5-1 lead, which leaves us, Gaffer, with one match left. The Pocket Rocket up against Josh Dye 
to yeah. go and put some points on the board for TTD. This has the potential of being a great match, though, because Josh is a rallier. Pocket likes to step off. Josh likes to step off as well. Definitely hang around for this match. Oh, there'll certainly be some big rallies here. You know, we'll, we'll see some big pocket rocket chos and backhands. And as we saw from Josh Dye against the founder, he likes a big forehand counter. He's got that swingy backhand as well. So, yeah, definitely stick around for this last match of the day. What's going on in the chat then? Lots of love. London Rose says, come on, Josh Dye. Yes, he played very, very well. If you didn't catch it, you should go back through once the video's over and watch his performance against the founder. He played very, very well. Equipment check for the whole TTD team, please. We will try our best. Promised in February. Look at that. We've been called out. We need to just have it on the screen, you know, in the bottom right of this. We do. We do. All in there. We'll get it. We'll get it. Yeah. Is a Dane playing next season? We love our Danish friend. Um, we never know. You might see him. You will definitely see him in TTD colours this year again. That's for sure. Um, whether or not he'll be in this league, we shall see. Mm, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, he's going to be in a couple of videos that we've already filmed, right? That are coming out very shortly. Which will be really, really good. Dane doing Dane things as he does. Makes it look like the easiest sport in the world. Can we have the chairman do the smash speed test? I'm not <laughs> sure it would even register. It would, <laughs> it would be like going through a speed camera on the motorway on rollerblades you wouldn't it wouldn't even register yeah, that's definitely, how slow definitely not going to get flashed is he no, no way no. no no yes all right let's chuck it down to the warm-ups then for these two scoreboards the tech guy he's slow on it needs updating As we can see here, so we're playing Fusion. Unfortunately, we've taken the loss here against Fusion. We were tied on the same point, same win, same losses. They are now going to move up. Um, we'll need to try and get an update on the other battle in this bottom half of the SPL Premier Division to see how the Battle of Scotland is going. But those last two matches that we're going to have after this one, a couple of weeks' time, against North Ayrshire, and then we finish off against Drumchapel Glasgow. Could well be the match to keep us in the division. We shall see. They're warming up their backhands here now. The competitors for our last match of the day. Yeah, these two have very similar backhands. Like to take two steps off, and as you can see from Josh there, just big technique. Really good feeling. Spin the ball heavy on. And also go through it at some really big pace. Seven, ten. See what Pocket can do. Notoriously a bit of a slow starter. Obviously the mood very, very low now in the team. Yeah, it's all on Pocket just to give us a little bit of joy to finish this match off. We gave him the big build up and they're already going at it. One thing I think we will see from Pocket is he knows Josh quite well. They're from the same area in the UK, played many, many times, and he will feel a certain level of confidence, I believe. Um, Pocket is a high ranked player on paper. So when Pocket goes into a match that he does have that confidence mm. you'll see those serves will be tighter those shots will be a little bit spinnier and a bit more potent just like that one so i feel like we are going to see the best of pocket rocket in this last match and spin oh. See what I mean though? Both of these are more than happy to take two steps off. Big shots, heavy spin. Oh, 
Yeah, long fast into the elbow there of pocket. Pushes him off balance. We got 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, just a little hand up there from Josh. It's a way of apologising. Must have clipped the net or an edge. Oh. Backhand. Oh. 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 <laughs> Look These at guys are slinging. The bounce on this forehand from Pocket. You can see just how much side spin he puts on this ball in just a moment. Flick of the net there as well. This one coming. Just oh. bounces and kicks off to the right hand side. Josh not knowing where to hit that ball. Sorry, sorry, Come on. Strong four in there from pocket. Again, another little apology there. Happens all so often in this game. Such fine margins. Clips the neck, clips the edge, edge of the bat. A good sportsmanship show. Oh. Hit through that really nicely. Big four in there. You could see the wind up, couldn't you, there from Josh? Mm. just starting to say that the playing conditions we've been playing for a couple of hours now it's just starting to get a little bit wet in our in our hall here need for ventilation yeah it's quite a warm day believe it or not yeah it does happen every now and again i get too passive on those long serves yeah seems it That's aggression though there from Josh. Again, a little sorry, but you know, you got to take your chances. Oh, they're just trading them. Jeez. Yeah, Josh isn't a regular Fusion 1 player. Normally plays more for their Fusion 2 team in the lower division in the championship in the British League, but wouldn't know it from his performance today. He's very good in the rally, is Josh. Yeah, he loves loves a rally. Oh. A nice serve there from pocket. Just kind of that half long territory there. And quite a tight set all round. We are at eight all. Who's going to take this first set? Yeah, he's not moving his feet on these serve receives at all, is he? He's just planting. Well, he's difficult. I guess he's played, like you say, he's played Josh a number of times. Very good finish. Finds the line beautifully. Sets Josh up for two set points. First one saved from the pocket. Yeah, not out of it yet. He'll do everything he can to take this to juice. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Didn't think he was going to do that though. <laughs> gifted, gifted that point. And Josh takes a first yeah. set. Uh, Josh playing well. Playing well. I think, yeah, pocket needs to take. I think in open rallies, Josh is very good at that. And therefore, I would take him away from open rallies. I would try and close up as much as you can. So on the first phase of point, make it as difficult as possible. If that's take the pace off, position it to difficult positions. You saw Dan got a little bit of joy going to Josh's wide forehand. So just mm. try and up the quality level 5% in those areas. Once you're into an open rally, it's, it's basically a 50-50 because these two are so similar. Yeah, you can see that Josh is serving quite a lot of float pockets kind of popping the ball up and then there's been two or three that Josh has then had that easy put away with the forehand and it's just the serve returns you know yeah, it's yeah. just getting into the point 
and and making your opponent actually have to win. Yeah, absolutely. What we got going on in the chat? You should try and get Larry on your team. That would be great. Um, but Larry is a fusion diehard. He's grown up there. His dad plays there. Um, but we should try and find a European version of Larry wherever he is. If that's a New <laughs> Dane or a Finn or a Swede, we want him. Yeah, let's have a look. Are you posting WTT Manchester? So we filmed a few bits with a certain uh, Danish pro in Anders Lind that are going to go out uh, shortly on the shorts. And obviously Beast played, so we've got a bit of behind the scenes action for you. So Pocket takes the first. Slightly drifty serve. I think we'll see a pumped up Pocket in the second now. You know, he won't have enjoyed that first. Oh, oh the strawberry. Beautiful. Yeah, nice air from the Fusion player. Feeling confident, pulls out the strawberry receive. Sets him up for his serve. It's always difficult, the last match yeah. of, a, of a dead rubber now. You know, 5-1 down, TTD. Fusion player obviously wants to continue the winning ways. Crowd, little bit flatter. Who's got what it takes? Who's got that mental positivity, that capability to take this? And float. Yeah, so you'd, you'd bank on pocket to make that one usually. Mm. But that forehand hitting the top of the net and flying off. A bit of positive self-talk there from Pocket, just going, let's go, let's go. You know, he will want to end this final match with a win. You can hear Pocket saying, so lucky, and it was. He held the first spin, Josh obviously heavily hacked it, but it was a little bit passive on the block. Better one. That's a nice block, yeah. Have to lean forward through it. Again from Pocket, he's won one point in this set going out to wide forehand. Everything else has been in that backhand corner. You need to try if he's to be successful in this. Oh. Forehand to the forehand because Josh's backhand there, as you've seen, very strong when it goes on. You'll start to let them fly as well if you keep playing it to that same place. You know, when you get a certain level of player, keep being predictable, they will start to get used to it. Hey. Oh. <laughs> it. Beep, beep. Let's have a little look. Pocket with a smile on his face, like he knew it was coming. Beautiful. It doesn't get better than that. Going oh. into the back end corner. Pocket. He needs to stay solid on that block. Just a little bit up in the air trying to trying to block that. Oh, swing. <laughs> Goes for a fast long serve again this time. Gifts the point to the fusion player. Still a comfortable lead here. Ah, oh, fuck it. I tell you what, if I'm Josh Dye right now. I am going for the taxi up the line. <laughs> Pocket's just given you two foul serves. Put my banker on smashing this clean up the line. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think you go for a long serve anyway. You know, you make your, your opponent play after missing. There we go. There we go. Just yeah. won the point for Josh Dye. Yeah. I am disappointed in you. I'm going to go <laughs> and remind him of that in a minute. Little bit lucky. Placement was world class, but a little bit lucky. He needed that, didn't he? Yeah. Needed that. Going a bit into self destruction mode there, pocket. Missing some easy serves and returns. But that's a nice little bit of luck. He'll take that all day long. Good from Josh. Again, open rally. If you are playing to Josh's backhand, he is, I mean, he's very, very high ranked in that aspect in the country. Point. Oh! 
pocket, was fishing out on the lake, looking for bass. And he didn't catch anything but a donkey. I think that is donkey of the day. Right there, from the fusion player. Pocket grafting. Stay strong from the back of the court. Gets two set points to level this match. Someone says, Moses, is that you? It's a great third ball from Josh. Pocket's had enough practice of playing Moses to pick up one or two of his tricks. But Josh there saves the first set point against him. Will he save the second or is Pocket going to take this and tie up the match one all? <laughs> it's contagious. Josh misses the serve. Got early Christmas all round here. We go. 1-1 one, one in sets. But yeah, if I'm Pocket, or if I'm in Pocket's corner, I am saying, as much fun as you are having, the skill dif difference in skill, the moment you get open to open and you're back in the back end is minimal. You are giving Josh the best chance of winning this match by doing it. I know it's your strength. Yeah. I know he probably feels quite comfortable there. But for me, take the path of least resistance, keep going out to wide forehand, then you can go back out to backhand. Because Josh... His backhand is a thing of beauty. It really is. Yeah, and I don't think we've seen the best of Pocket's backhand in this mm. match so far either. So if if you know that something isn't quite going right, and but it is for your opponent, absolutely, you need to change tactics. Otherwise, you're playing a very risky game. And as we just saw there, it was risky. It needed a gift yeah. to be given to him in it order did. to take that set, really. Yes, punch has to be hard, top quality, exactly. So when Josh really loads up that spin on the ball, it's difficult because it is loaded and you're just trying to hold it on the table. But it's not quite good enough to just play it back in because yeah. Josh is too good, he's going to cane that. So you need to either punch punch through it, put more pace on it, or change the location, change it up the yeah, line. Yeah, I think we had some someone in, in the comments saying punch has to be hard and top quality. Absolutely. Let's see if we'll get a couple of punches in this set now from Pocket or from Josh, yeah. both good backhand players. Good What's going on in the chat? What's going on with the Beast and the Wizards? So they're not here. They actually play, the Beast plays in Germany, the Dane plays in Denmark. And current rules with English leagues is if you play in either one of those leagues, you cannot play in the English league. It might change in the future, so there's always a chance we might get what is probably considered our two best players available in this league, but we don't know right now. Oh. Very indecisive there, not confident going for the flick on that one, Pocket Rocket. Again, a slight delay in our scoreboard. I believe it's 3-1 to the fusion player. There we go. We've got the catch up now. <laughs> long serve. Yeah. Pocket plants his feet. On those long ones, you have to take a step back. A slight. Give yourself a centimetre or two. Look them up. Yeah, that one was better. You know, took his time a little bit more there. Spin the ball in. Nothing too aggressive. And he wins that point. Both of these players really up for this match now. You can hear it. Good spin, good spin there by Pocket into a good position so that the Fusion player doesn't get that clean counter. Very good from the Fusion player, Josh. Being pinned in that backhand corner, moving his feet really well. Yeah, it was good controlled shots there. But Pocket just had that chance to just be a little bit more aggressive with that forehand. Just didn't work out. Another long serve into the backhand with the receive going into the net. Yeah, you can't find any rhythm here at the minute, Pocket mm. Rocket. You can see that by the unforced errors that have crept into this set. But he can't write him off. A four point deficit, but he does have his serve. Oh. Sorry, he might have flicked an edge. Yeah, I think it did. Nice swingy backhand there from Josh. Gets another point added to his lead. 
Let's have a look. Again, you keep it in the backhand side. Josh will make you pay. Gives the pocket rocket a taste of his own medicine. Yeah, it's just a bit too passive there with pocket push. Beautiful. Big roar from the fusion. Number three got seven set points to take this third. Oh. Massive backhand to take the third set. Josh Dye flying, swinging on both wings. Yeah, the pocket. He's struggling. You mm. can see he really is struggling out there. He's just now trying to put the ball on. Yeah. You know, you can see it. He's not really going for aggressive shots. He's trying to push. He's making the fusion player play these great top spins. And he's just so confident now is Josh Dyer. Yeah, yeah. And you can see they're hitting winners all over the shop. But if you think how, how much easier is table tennis when someone solely keeps it to one half of the table. Yeah. Brilliant. I, yeah. The ball's going to land here. I then get to decide what I want to do with it. So you have to, if you're pocket, you have to open up all of that table. Short forehand, long forehand, long to the middle. Then the wide backhands can come back into play. You can't just keep putting the ball on the same place because a player like Josh is too good. Yeah, absolutely. We need to see a rejuvenated effort now from Pocket Rocket if he wants to get anything from this match. Are we going to see another fifth setter? We've seen a few today already. Or is the Fusion player going to now the match for Fusion and take this? A nice comment here from Table Tennis Life. Josh's loop kills are to die for. Absolutely. Wins the point. And again, tactically, I'm not sure if Pocket's just struggling, so he's just trying to keep the ball on the table, doing anything he can and playing up the line a little bit more risky. Yeah, I, I think that's what's happening, Joe. I think he's now just going to try and get himself back into this match. Because as I said at the start of this match, he knows that he really should be winning this match. To be 2-1 down, he's going to really need to fight for this win. Gets very lucky with that return. Pops the ball high into the backhand corner. And Josh probably wasn't ready for such an awkward return. Very good from Josh. Yeah, it mixes it up well. Chooses to pivot and use the forehand instead of the backhand this time around. Gets the first point on the board for him in this set. Better. Nice half long. Yeah, you can see it's very tight. Started well though here in this fourth pocket. He's got away with a couple of points here and there, but he needs to just keep on pushing through. Sometimes that's the only way. Fusion player now doing a, a lot more unforced errors. This one is heading the way of another fifth set match. It's a completely different set, this one. Yeah. We had Pocket making all the unforced errors in that last set, and now it's Josh's oh. turn. Oh! oh. Let's have a look. There we go. We had a lot of mixed points there. Big back. And then we've got some quality. That short technique. Drills it cross court. Flick of the net. Yep, he'll take it. Anything that he can get right now, pocket. He will grab it with both hands. Better. A little bit different return there as well. Pivoting, using the forehand. 
not too aggressive either. Oi, went for the strawberry again. So pocket 10-3 up here. It's been quite a comfortable set for him really, relying on Josh to make the unforced errors. And there's another one. And pocket does take that fourth. We go to the fifth. You called it. You said it was gonna go all the way. Very interesting now. All the momentum seemingly with the pocket. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was a completely tale of two sets there. You know, in that third, it was pocket with all of the unforced errors, couldn't get any rhythm at all. And then Josh has just had the exact same thing happen to him in that fourth set. It's going to make this fifth set really interesting now. Is it just going to come down to who's going to keep the ball on? Yeah. Are they going to go for that type of approach? Or is one of them going to take the initiative, find that flow, that purple patch, and just start ripping the ball? Both players are very capable of doing so. Yeah. Yeah, I think if if you're on that bench for, for TTD, you're telling Pocket immediately, no matter what happens with first point, whether you win it, lose it, self-talk, get bouncing, get get the blood really pumping, get noisy, because then the bench will react off you, the guy with the drum is going to react off you, the whole thing. We know that Pocket plays better when he's noisy. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think... If he can just get some of his top spin shots on, that's going to give him a lot of confidence. Maybe if Josh flings a couple long as well with these counters that he was missing in that last set, that's going to give Pocket a lot of confidence. Here we go then, the Fusion player to kick us off with the serve in the fifth. we go so pocket again just trying to keep it on the table josh having none of it gets in with the heavy attack oh, oh. oh. josh with another massive backhand pocket though stands his ground blocks it into the open space look at that moved well with that actually wasn't directly onto his back pocket did have to adjust there and he adjusted really well Josh is fired up though. Gets away with that one. I think we're going to see a lot of graft here from the pocket if he's going to win this match. Not playing his best by any means, but he is still in it. Oh. That is a great combo. Let's have a look. Big backhand followed by the big forehand. Oh, that is a meal deal and a half, that. Very inconsistent play at the moment from the Fusion player. Plays one point like he did in the previous one. And then we get that. Did everything right, set it up beautifully. Yep. At the minute, it's the Fusion player with the match in his hands. And this is it. I think Pocket is probably playing a consistent 60% here yeah, of what yeah. he is capable of. But Josh is swinging. Yeah. You know, he's figuratively, figuratively and literally, he goes from playing really strong shots and points and then his level just drops down and misses the ball sometimes and misses easy points. So we're going to see who is going to take this. But before we resume, we've got a timeout from the Fusion camp. I've got a timeout. What are we saying then, guys? Who is going to take this in the chat? Is it the pockets match now that he snuck ahead or is Josh going to drag it back and take the win? What are we thinking? We've got a new name in there, the teapot block. That was that pocket one where he just... <laughs> so important, yeah. Stand your ground and, yeah, bat up high, try and block it back on. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, pocket may continue with the same tactic here mm -hmm. of just trying to keep the ball on. Yeah. He's not really going for anything too crazy. He's getting... Lucky, I think, with, with quite a lot of it. But sometimes that is the best play, yeah. you know, especially in a fifth set. You want to make your opponent have to hit the ball past you. And Josh has done it 
only on a couple of occasions here, and that's why Pocket is leading this fifth. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you probably can't take into account as well that this would be a massive win for Josh, right? Coming to play Pocket, who's massively higher ranked than him, into an away event. Yeah, oh, there's definitely that mental aspect to it, for sure. I think with Josh, we might see a bit more control on his top spins, just trying to get them into play rather than everything going into a big top spin. See, he tried to go a little bit slow. He tried to go a bit, a bit slower there, but actually it's not worked out for him. Yeah, nice backspin serve into the middle there. Pocket, dumping that one into the net. But he still leads this fifth, 6-4. Got table tennis life. He's been with us this whole event. Shout out to you, my friend. He's got Josh winning this. Yeah, I think. I think if my if I was in Fusion's corner, <laughs> I am saying to Josh, swing away, lad. Keep swinging. Keep and and you know what? You may lose, but at least you go down swinging. No problem with that. Keep trying to be aggressive. Yeah, you've got both players kind of doing total opposites haven't you here yeah. you got Josh going for the win going for his shots and pocket just trying to keep the ball on really six seven this could go all the way to a juice couldn't it it could do I think we need to see a big pocket Cho no matter how he wins the next point I want to see a big Cho pocket going out to the forehand wins the point lucky on the point, though. Yeah, definitely lucky. Seen a couple of uh, those missed smashes there from Josh. Maybe that's just a tactic. Just drop off a table and lob. <laughs> He's got to switch it. Oh. Tried to. Didn't pull off. TTD bench is so silent. Yeah. Again, when, you're, when you know you have a player like Pocket who responds really well... I'd be trying to get him fired up. I'd have that whole bench bouncing. Yeah, this is one of those times when I kind of wish I was on the bench and not in the booth. Now you can see see a couple of the guys there, Founder and Tom the Frog, trying to support Pocket just to see this over the line. It's not been pretty, but as long as he gets the win, that's all that matters. Mm. This is going to be really tight now, isn't it? <laughs> Fusion player serving, 8-9 down. What's he going to go for? Pops it into the middle. Oh, gambles beautifully. Big gamble, big payoff. And 9 all with pocket serving. Feel, feel the tense, <laughs> even from the commentary booth, which is a little bit away from the match. The strawberry. Oh. It's brave. I saw the strawberry kick as well there on the table. Fusion player gets a match point. He, ha he has been the aggressor. If you pocket, taxi wouldn't be a bad shout. Anything long fast into that forehand now. And the lob was oh. nervy. Oh. You called it. You called it, Joe. Choosing the fifth. Here we go. So, if I'm pocket again, forehand receive, use your forehand. It's likely to land middle table around that center line. Use your forehand to send out to Josh's wide forehand. There we go. We've got the tactics from the voice. Is it going to work out like that? He hasn't. Oh. Oh. He hasn't. He's gone backhand flick straight into the strength. And again, if you're pocket, I know your backhand flick is strong. Josh's backhand is very strong. Yeah, it's up to pocket now to save another match point. Got to go long forehand again off this serve. Cannot go for the backhand. Oh, let's flick the net. Josh is still in though. Oh! <laughs> Now that is graft. Right there from Pocket when he's really up against it. He's got a smile on his face, he knows. 
Is that going to be the turn? Is that going to be essentially the match winner for Pocket Rocket and for TTD? You do not go out to the woods at night and you do not backhand flick this into Josh's backhand Pocket Rocket. It's gone for the mix. Oh, massive spin. I think that push was, it wasn't, it, it wasn't aggressive exactly. enough, it wasn't it deep enough, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't short, it was just kind of there, ready to be hit by Josh, and he's got good spin in there. Again, another match point for the Fusion number three. It's gone long. Flick of the net. <laughs> he's gone for the big, big winner there. Has Josh die? has not paid off for him, and the Pocket Rocket is still in this match. Pocket Rocket. Here we go. Whatever you do, it's got to be aggressive. I want to see a long dig somewhere. Oh, he's done it. Oh, flick of the net. Brings Josh another match point. How many is Pocket going to get away with here? Or is this it? Is this the one that he doesn't get away what, from? If I am Josh, this serve... The last three serves have gone long to my backhand. I'm going to pivot early and I'm going to go for show and bomb this thing up the line with my forehand. Oh, he's got backhand. Pocket's holding. It's holding well. He's on the lob. <laughs> he's got another donkey out of Josh Dye. I tell you, this should have been the tactic from the start. The classic Moses. That's what I'm going to start calling this. I tell you what, I feel for Josh Dye because he is doing everything perfectly and just can't quite get it over the line. Let's see what the pocket does. Timeout. Oh, what a time to call a timeout. I didn't even realize he had one left. That is a massive, massive point there to save match point. When would you ever see pocket bringing out a Dan Moses? Lobbing for his life, trying to keep the ball in. This is the thing about Pocket. As much as we love to see the really clean backhands and the strong shots, he is a grafter. Yeah. You know, he works so, so hard and he hates the easy points that he <laughs> loses. And when he can win a point like that, you kind of just think, why isn't he doing it more? Yeah. yeah, it's fair. Yeah, it's definitely an aspect of his game we don't see probably enough. What are we saying then for Pocket? It's on Josh's serve. What's Josh doing? Again, if someone taxis me in a match, <laughs> I am willing to miss, I'm willing to serve in the Met or serve it long. I am getting that taxi back. And if I'm Josh Dye right now, I am taxiing up the line with everything I've got. Everything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's high, high risk, but you know, at this point in the game, go for it. Maybe that's what you do. Make yourself you know? a legend. Yeah. Here we go, boys back out. 13 all. The longest set that we have had so far in this match between TTD and Fusion. And it is coming down to this. Who's got what it takes? Let's go, Josh Dye. Bring me the taxi. Pocket's gone into the forehand. He's been calling it out all day long. He's gone into that forehand with a good deep push and he's got himself the first match point. Does he go short serve on here? He's been going long to the backhand. I think he goes long. Gone long backspin. Oh! <laughs> Pocket Rocket has done it against all odds, saved multiple match points and takes it 15-13. Look at the cheeky grin on his face. He knows. He has just gotten away with that one. That is relief. Absolute relief on the face there of Pocket Rocket. What a final match to finish us off here. My goodness, what a display from the Pocket. Not playing necessarily too well. Josh playing really, really well. Just managing to grind it down. Yes. So where does that leave what us? Match. What Gaff. a match. Yeah, so that's a 5-2 loss there against Fusion, even though that was a huge kind of fight and effort there from pocket it does put another point on the board it means that we can at least go into the next match against north airshire on the back of an individual win on saturday the 27th of april catch that match on tte.tv to follow all of the action
Only thing left to say is thanks for streaming with us. Keep an eye out on socials tomorrow because there is a very important trailer coming your way, guys, that we hope is going to blow your minds. Yeah, we've got some huge, huge news. So stay tuned. All right, sign us off.